This video will be a segue in the video I release tomorrow, Saturday, regarding the children of Lud, aka the Almec Aryans of India, ancient Formarians, Shia, Shang Dynasty, North American Indians of the Northwest, and their migration to the Americas. Bang, bang, ping, ping, pow, pow. <sighs> Clearly, little homie's been in the back of the classroom, that's all I'm say, which is good. It's all about vibration awareness. Hey, y'all, uh, you know, I, I had a little moment. I just got to, you know, hey, <laughs> it's Drop Nation, baby. We surfing the way, you know, and sometimes it's interference patterns that need to be addressed. You know, I don't go around uh, nitpicking, <laughs> for lack of better words, man. You know, uh, but sometimes when our investigation is brought up or specifically our perspective I think we have a right to speak on our own perspective, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, nothing's too big or too small when it comes to being able to explain your own self of how you surf your own wave, my nigga. Hey, look here, bro. Uh, Yeshua, the unifier, you know what I'm saying? Or should I say Joshua, the divider? Because you could have unified it. The frequency, right? I mean, you, you could have unified the frequency. All you had to do was just say, hey, I want to, uh, you know, put this drop on. Shout out to the drop, you know, and we're going to be talking about some of this stuff in my next drop. Bang. Nah, nah, you couldn't do that. You couldn't do that because you didn't want them to agree with whatever I'm flowing with. So you tried to pre-position, you know what I mean? You know, just uh, tangle up, web up their minds a little bit to let them know what you think about my perspective. <laughs> my naga, you can't speak on me. Hey, look here, man. I know you uh been in the back of the classroom, man, a, a little while now. You know, I remember when you first started doing your first drops, man. And, you know, I know you bounce around in different classrooms, you know. Shout out to Big Judah. I know you're in Big Judah's classroom. Heavy, you know, uh... You know, Caramayo, shout out to Caramayo. You know what I'm saying? You, you're you getting a lot from, you know, you're getting a little from a lot of people or a lot from a little people. You know, however you want to look at it, it's all about perspective. But what you will going to do, what, what you will going to do, my nigga, <laughs> is put that respect on our perspective. You're not just going to act like you got our perspective so you can present our drop to your classroom. Oh, 432 has the perspective that we are them. What? Well, how do you know that that's my complete perspective? However, I will use the books of remembrance to explain. Is this a debate? Is this a, uh, it sounds like a rebuttal. See, maybe you don't see this, man. Maybe you too young. I don't know. I mean, I know you a little homie in the back of the classroom. I'm going to shout you out in a minute, man. I'm about to play some drop. You know, we're going to enjoy some of your drop, actually, man. So that's cool. That's cool. Because I remember you, you know, having an issue with the whole, you know, David, you know what I'm saying, rising again. You know what I mean? Kanda, we. You had an issue with David because you wanted to stick to your Christ, right? You got an issue with the law. You know, the law ain't perfect. It's perfect, but there's something more perfect which is the spirit and you can't have the law without the spirit hey, hey hey look here man rule number one don't put no hijack in between you and your creator don't put no power beside you and your power so when you don't put no hijack in between you and your great spirit you got nothing but spirit so the law can't be without spirit if you got nothing but spirit because you don't have nothing in between you and your great spirit. But I know that spirit word is tricky. I mean, hey, Christ, Christ is the spirit, right? He's the spirit. Managa, your mama is your ruah, is your ha, is your breath. Your mama's your breath. Your mama's not just your earthly mother. The earth is a man of... The earth is, is a manifestation of the ingredients your mama put together. But don't you get it twisted that your mama's just a physical earthly mother. 
Your mother is that ruach, is that breath, and your father is that shaper, that security, that vibration that secures you. You want to be Yahshua or Yeshua, you're going to have to choose, man. Which one? I mean, we can go Joshua, the high priest, you know, that Zachariah flow. You know, I mean, he's actually being crowned high priest by Wamana. Oh, yeah, I think we're going to dig on that. You know, of course, you got Joshua, Joshua, you know what I'm saying? Hawashua, Kitsukooto. The Mormons call him Jesus. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this Jesus Joshua thing is thrown around a lot. I mean, even Zechariah. <laughs> All right, man, we're just surfing the wave, y'all. I mean, this is a teachable moment, so we're going to have some fun with it because if you're going to be here, you might as well enjoy the wave surf. You know what I'm saying? Uh, then take gold and silver, make the crowns. I mean, Zechariah 6 11, set them upon the head of Joshua or Yeshua, the son of. Josedek, the high priest, and speaketh to him, saying, Thus speaks Hawah of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of this place. Yeah, because when we dig on David, we're also digging on a branch, a branch. For David, a branch is being restored, right? That's Jeremiah 23. We'll get that. We're talking about a branch, man, that's sprouting up from the root, my naga, not the side of the tree, but sprouting up, my naga, coming up out. We're going to get all that. We're going to get the Hebrew root on the branch. But the Joe, you know, this this Joshua, who, uh, hey, Hawa is saying, behold, the man whose name is the branch, he shall grow up out of his place. He shall build the temple of Hawa. He shall build the temple of Hawa. He shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. I know I get it, man. These are just dead words from dead teachers. And you say, hey, man, we should look for life, you know, just watch the waves, dude. Watch the waves, dude. Totally gnarly. I get it, man. I mean, we know that mama's alive. We know that Abba's alive. Our frame and our shape of our life. We we get our connection with, you know, the tree of life, Managa, the water that flows, because we got the water. We connect our fire, our water. We connect our air, our ether, Managa. We definitely connect our earth. But what you ain't going to do is act like uh, the frequency and the root and the foundation is not still here with eyes to see within the script. And just because you don't agree with the script, suddenly it's just written by man and we should pay attention to nature. That's hijacked city. Because you should have eyes to see. To discern, my nigga. My little nigga. You know, not, not my OG noggers in the back of the class, you know. Not my little homies in the back. But just these uh, jabronis that peek their head in. You know, they want to throw a couple stones, take a couple of ideas, and get their twist on. These are snakes, Managa, in the back of our class. These are snakes. You know, waiting to put some venom out, waiting to twist something, and waiting to twist the perspective. And I got to, you know, a hey, slice and dice as I see it, as we see it. And, you know, hey, bro, you can go and, you know, hey, make 20,000 rebuttals, Managa, go pop off. But I'm doing this for a teachable moment, not for you. This ain't for you. This for the real Joshua, man. This for the real Yeshua's, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, look how they do this, man. This is a uh, Zachariah, man. Let's 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 change versions right quick, man. What version we want? Oh, <laughs> Let's go to the Tanakh, man. What does it say over here, man? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it the Britons? Man, I was just surfing the wave in the Zechariah early. 
Oh, yeah, here we go, man. And it shall take silver and gold and make crowns, and thou shalt put them upon the head of Jesus. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, we know there's a bunch of Jesuses, man. I mean, look, man. You got to choose your Joshua, man. You know, the Christians don't know about these other Jesuses, man. Right? But we also know that Joshua does not translate to Jesus at all. You know? <laughs> it does not translate at all. It is a uh, transliteration. You know, just hijack cities, what we call it. Hey, but let's stop playing, man. Let's go. Let's go, man. So someone asked me a question. What would David do? That's a great, that's a great question, man. Because we can't ask, you know what I'm saying, what would Jesus do? Because there ain't no Jesus. There ain't no Yahweh Shai, unless we're just talking about the uh, energy of a Zeus or Zeus. That New Testament, you didn't need a New Testament because you don't have a new covenant yet. My naga, you ain't been saved from captivity. You need a New Testament oh, to uh, create a spiritual law. Because the law is cool, you know, the code is cool, but, you know, we need the real code. See, something about these Christians, they always want the, the real that and the real Israel. Right. The spiritual Israel. We don't want David. We want we want the real David, the son of David. We about to get. A little deeper into the connection with Hawa and David. So you can understand the code is a frequency. And those that are speaking against it. They washed up. You know, mama can be chaos. That same mama you looking at that's that's peaceful, that you love it. Oh, I'm going to learn something. I'm going to sit here and learn from <laughs> the angel of the water. You talking about mama? Okay, got you. Oh, the angel of this and the angel of that. You talking about, oh, you talking about the dragon, the angels, the dragons. Yeah. The code is alive, my knife. The code is written in picto, paleo, my knife. In New Mexico, Los Lunes. It is not some words written on a page. It is, it is in stone that they date thousands of years, right? 1,500 years, whatever they're dating. The code is already written within you. Your DNA is cold. Numbers are cold. Hebrew is cold. So it's up to us to say, yeah, this stuff's been retranslated, retranslated, retranslated. What, what foundation can they not change? What foundation would Hawa make sure is anchored in there forever? Rule number one, don't put no power before your power. You think the Christian's following that? You want to unify. Well, let's dig on it. Yahshua the unifier or Joshua the divider. So after you talk about this video of ours, about the greatest world war you've never heard of, Preston John Genghis Khan, right? Is a great segue into your great release tomorrow. Your big splash, right? So let's watch this. This this is going to lead us into our big splash. Hey, no problem, man. I don't mind warming up the stage, my noggin. But if you're going to have me on your stage, you're going to have to let my perspective speak for itself. If you were confident, you wouldn't have to say what our perspective is and how you're going to rebut that with the books of remembrance. You're going to rebut our entire perspective with one video. Matter of fact, you're going to give these people one video that 
this is a radio show, by the way. You know, this ain't even none of the Presta John investigation installments. This ain't even me going in, going in. This is just a radio show with slides, my noggin. And this is the perspective you want to share to wrap up our perspective. When it comes to what? Look at all the stuff this jabroni's going to explain in one sitting, my noggin. We on Preston John 65, but he's going to wrap it up in one video. He's going to wrap up the concept. Oh, that's a big word. Let's not let's let's not sleep. You know, mama's going to put them words in your mouth. You know, she's going to come at you crooked as well. my She's going to set you up for your own failure, your own arrogance. If you wanted to come humble, you could have just said, hey, check this video out by Con Drop. We're going to be digging on some of this stuff tomorrow. That's all you have to say. But you had to set it up like a debate, like a rebuttal. You know, watch this, because their perspective is da-da-da-da-da. However, we're going to use our books of remembrance to explain the concept, because 432 can't do that with all these years of investigation. Not like we have found anything, right? We are investigating, and you know what? We have anchored in a couple places in order to put a story together. And you gotta respect it, and you do respect it. And when you say you respect it, I believe you respect it. But then, you don't keep the code. So how much respect can you give? You're Yahshua the Unifier. I mean, all you do is bang Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You love the Jesus story, but then, you know, you wanna, you know, downplay the code because it's written. <laughs> but what's the Jesus story? Is that all coming through your spirit? <laughs> the Ruach, HaKadosh, it's just saying Jesus, Jesus to you? Or are you learning that out of a book? With nothing to back it up in the Hebrew. So 432 has this perspective, okay. By the way, we got a dragonfly perspective. And the code we keep is alive. A live, my nigga. But you wouldn't know that because you're not connected directly to the great spirit. You got a hijack, which means that you need uh, some other spiritual intervention. You need Christ, right? You need Christ to get to your most high. But that power of the most high, my nigga, would not be charging you up to say the type of stuff that you say. The power of the Most High would never even come close to speaking against something that is energy, frequency, and vibration, which is the code. Because as you stop killing, stop putting the power before your power, stop covering and stop bearing false witness, as you start charging up, that's a frequency change. That's just, that is a shift, my nugget, in vibration. Don't ever downplay the code as if it's not alive and if it's not absolutely spiritual. We don't need nothing more spiritual outside of us connecting to our great spirit. We don't need no other spirit. We don't need no other spiritual to put on to that great spirit connection. You Christians need to add a spiritual connection to the law because the law is just deeds. No, my nun, when you don't put a power before your power, That is your grand connection. It's more than a deed. It's a returning. That's not a deed. It's life. You chose life. It's salvation itself, man. You stop putting that power next to your power, saying that that is Jesus is God. Oh, yeah, we, we about to get it, man. We about to get it. And it ain't like I'm steaming Willie Beeman at you, man. It's just the spirit that you're under, you know? That's what Eric, he, he asked me later. I don't even know what's irritating you, man. It's just the hijack, man. It's not you, bro. I wish you the best. I wish your family the best. I don't wish you no harm, man. You seem like a good bro, you know, on a good day. You know what I mean? But the spirit that you're hijacked with, that's the shit. You know what I mean? At the wrong time, bro. And you're going to... Feature our drop with a back slap. You're going to feature our drop with a backhanded compliment. 
We don't need that, bro. I mean, we don't need you to feature our drop. If you're going to do it, do it right, but don't do it and then say, oh, well, his perspective is this, but I'm going to prove tomorrow, man, on my great release, my grand release, man. Dude, dude, we're going to prove with these magical books of remembrance, even though, you know, you know, books are, are written and, you know, <laughs> they're just words on a book, you know, they're just written stuff. And, and we shouldn't pay attention to really written stuff like that, but we should study, but we shouldn't really pay attention. I mean, you know, we about to get it, man. Fall backdrop. I don't normally, you know what I'm saying? This ain't about Yeshua the Unifier or Joshua the Divider. It ain't about him. It ain't about you, bro. But man, I got my foot on the ass of that bullshit hijack you wonder, and I'm going to slay that shit. And that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? And you can keep digging on, you know, our track record. And you can keep, you know, surfing the wave and our tail spin. You know what I'm saying? But don't get washed up because you definitely are surfing the wave. Use your books of remembrance, man. And in these books, you're going to break down Genghis Khan and Cibola, the Seven Cities, Coronado's Expedition and everything. One video. Oh, this... Th th this better be a 70-part series, man. If you're going to break down the seven cities of gold, too, oh, this is going to be the greatest video of all time. I'm there with my popcorn, my nigga. Hey, man, y'all check out this video. See, I just I just brought you some a huh? because the tribe don't. We ain't against you, man. We ain't against you, bro. But you damn sure are speaking out of your ass right now. Hey, put the kitties to bed. You speaking out of your ass, man. Trying to talk about our perspective. Saying you're going in one video tomorrow or Saturday, you know, either one, you're going to use the books of remembrance <laughs> to break down the concept of Genghis Khan, Cibola, Seven Cities Ago, and Prester John. The concept? Well, what's a concept, man? I, I need help. I need help, man. Aqua Tai, we need help with this one, man. Concept, okay. Oh, a general notion. Okay. Here's a question. If you just have a general notion, how could you use a general notion to explain anything against my perspective? I'll wait. How can your concept How can your general notion, how can your abstract thought? <laughs> I mean, we're talking concept, right? Con, con. Okay, okay. Concepts are defined as abstract ideas. How can your idea, how can your abstract idea, not foundational, functional idea, but an abstraction of something real, which is the New Testament, which is you. Right? Yeshua, the unifier, that's you. You are the abstract. Oh, so you're going to use you to break down something that you can never understand? You're going to use you to break down something you can never understand within yourself. Unless you keep the code, not what you call the real code, spirit code. No, man. The code that says connect to your great spirit. You want to connect to a, a spiritual nature code? Well, that code is connected to a great spirit, and that's what we are. Because rule number one, Exodus 20, got us in code. And Hawa spoke all these words saying, I am Hawa, your power, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out the head, house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Let me just let the harps play right quick, man. Hey, fall back, uh, Yeshua. I know you're in this classroom. You're always in this classroom. Fall back. You in the back. I don't want to put you in the box like Jack in the box, but, you know, fall back in the back. Just fall back for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Because I want you to get this work. 
What is no other gods? You know what happens in Christianity, uh, Yeshua, Joshua? You know what happens, Josh, Joshi? What happens is that they say no other gods. How can we hijack that? We have to make Yeshua God. Now, he's God so we can get around the no other gods clause in rule number one. No other gods, he is God. Wow. Hijack 101. That's Hijack City, bro. For real, for real. This is Hijack City, man. I'm not doing this for you. I'm not doing this for you, man. I'm doing this to slay the hijack because we are hijack slaves and this is Drop Nation. And before you speak on us, before you speak on our perspective, you got to put some respect on the flow, on the wave that you've been surfing. Because you out of order, bro, but you've been out of order. So, you know, you, <laughs> hey, rule number one, you've been out of order. No other gods before me. Thou shalt not make until you know images, right? <laughs> oh, I think you got that part, right? So as soon as you say, oh, no more white Jesus, you still got your Howard Shy lingering around with the same damn story of being pierced through the rib, pierced through the side, rose in three days, died at 32, whatever the hell, 33, came back. Then said, I'm going to come back later, never came back. But you believe he's coming back because it says so, right? Not because it's in your your spirit, your ruah, because it says so, right? Because if it didn't say so, you wouldn't be talking about this bullshit. Your ruah didn't tell you that. You read that, you were indoctrinated, and you never let it go. You hijacked, bruh. You got a God. You got another God, man. How do we prove that, man? Let's just get it, man. Let's just get it, man. I ain't got time. You know, I, I got some more, uh, you know, droppery to get to, my nigga. We, we, <laughs> we getting back on code. We, we good, man. We good. You know, but it's a community thing, you know? All right, so let's read, man. I, clearly, I had to say a few things that's on my mind. And I'm telling the bro straight up like this. So, you know, ain't nothing behind his back. I'm going to address it to the bro. I didn't feel it was very respectful. Let me just tell you before we even read my comments and your comments so everybody can, you know, flow with it. This ain't about the vision. <laughs> I'm talking to Yeshua the Unified. <laughs> nah, man. We are united, you know what I'm saying, within... A code, my nagi. And, you know, those that are outside of that or got their own interpretation of Exodus 20 and all that, you know what I'm saying? They, they want to hang on to whatever, you know, doctrine of a new hero, right? A new romance. Oh, man. Etymology, love to the temple, oh, man. That's why I tell you, man, it's Drop Nation. It's Drop Nation. So once you talk about you got a concept that's going to somehow go against our flow because of your concept you're talking about an entire tribe that's been investigating man you don't think we turned over this stone or turn over that stone that ain't arrogance that's confidence con we are confident in being a strong arrow shot out by a strong archer but you want a new hero or do you want a new romance love to the templar see the new testament is a new romance <laughs> a new romance, a real new romance, man. Written or recited of the adventures of a knight or a hero. So romance ain't about a love story. It's all about a knight or a hero. We've been digging on the swan knights. I mean, you know, I don't know how that fits. I don't know how this, this Jesus over there in that new test with this, you know, this new hero because you had an old hero, right? You had a, a Kanda we. You had a hero. We had a hero, right? <laughs> First of all, Hawaz our hero. Hawaz the hero. You know what I'm saying? Isaiah 43. I even I am Hawa. Beside me there is no savior. 
And the Christian says, survey says, wait, we have a way to hijack this. We'll make Jesus God. So there's no beside me. He is me. He, yeah, there we go. We got him again. First, they had to wiggle the way out of Exodus 20. You should have no other power, man, right? No other power. They say God, dog, but you know we're talking power. No other power. No other power. Whether you see before or beside or next to my nugget, no other power. But maybe you just uh, lost track of mama. So you think mama's just uh, around you, something that you could see? Mama is the breath you take. Framer, shaper. It's not your father walking around by himself. Just, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a connection. Feminine, masculine connection. You got a mother and a father in your house. I hope. You know what I'm saying? I hope. Allow why? You got a mother and a father. In your house, in your house house, and your mother's rocking with you. She's giving you breath and revelation. You don't need that revelations. You got the Ruah. Remember, you want to respect the living word, right? You want to, you don't want to take the dead words on the page. You want to respect the living Ruah, right? That's your mama. Your mama got a code, right? What's the code of your mama? Hey, man. Allow one. Uh, we just surfing the wave, man. Let's dig on some songs, man. This is for the wave surfers because a lot of your same stuff, man, we, we got to hear, it, you know, always, you know what I'm saying? There's always, you know, that type of, uh, frequency that it seems like it never stops. You know, it seems like there's always this energy that's supposed to be in the class, but you know, they really want to just tear down even the smallest things. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't want to truly unify. It's more of what can I prove? And that to me, man. Hey. Halahua, man. Rebuke me not in your anger, neither chastise me or chasten me in your wrath. Be gracious unto me, Hawa, for I languish away. Heal me, O Hawa, for my bones are frightened. My soul also is sore frightened. And thou, Hawa, how long? Return, Hawa, deliver my soul. Who is your savior? They're not crying out to Jesus, man. They're not crying out to Jesus, fool. David, David ain't, David ain't, David ain't crying out to JC, man. And the Christians try to say in Psalms 110, oh, uh, the Lord said unto my Lord is David saying that, uh, you know, or someone saying that David is saying to Jesus, calling him Lord. Nah, man. We had to get the Targum translation on that. We had to call Bullocks on that, right? We had to get the Targum Psalms 10. So, you know, we still talking David. Composed by David. A song. Hawa said in his decree to make me Lord of all Israel. But he said to me, wait, still for Saul of the tribe of Benjamin to die. For one reign must not encroach on another. Oh, now we're talking, okay, because, you know, it just says, uh, 
your Lord said to my Lord, right? In the regular translation. I mean, you know, this, <laughs> you know, this is when it gets fun, man, because, you know, you got to be able to see clearly, man, if you're going to serve this way. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies my footstool, man. Hey, hey, little homie, man, I feel you, man. They do mess up these translations. You got to dig deeper. You're right. So tell the Christian, man, that when they try to make this Jesus, the Lord said unto my Lord, what? Jesus. So David is calling uh, Jesus his Lord. Sit at my right hand, Jesus. Until I make your enemies my footstool. Question for the fools all around. For the fools, not not for the not for the real ones, but question for the fool. When has Jesus had any war in which Hawa rescued him and made his enemies his footstool? When has Jesus fought for you? Please direct me to this point in history. Please direct me to this war that took place where Jesus was on the front lines for you. So this is out of context to say, oh, my enemies, oh, my spiritual enemies. Okay, Christian, you got spiritual Israel, spiritual enemies. <coughs> oh, man, let me get my uh, alkaline, man. It's about to get good, man. Fall back. Little homie, get ready. Let's go. Because we have fun with these teachable moments. So is this Jesus sitting in my right hand? Is this is this J.C.? They want it to be, right? Because their doctrine says that Jesus is at the right hand. Nah. Nah, this ain't about JC. We had to go to the Targum script, right? Composed by David, right? Hawa said in his decree. So all <laughs> over there, he just said, your Lord said unto my Lord. Over here, it says, Hawa said in his decree to make me Lord of all Israel, but he said to me, wait still for Saul of the tribe of Benjamin to die. So is this Jesus or are we talking David? Right, right. For one reign must not encroach on another. Jesus or David, because I don't know when Jesus took a reign. I don't know when he was actually reigning. I don't know when he was anointed by the creator. And where it says, Hawa said, that uh, he's my son. Hawa, Hawa says you're my son. You know, everything is uh, JC, 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 right? Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. I get it. You're Yeshua the Unifier. But did Yeshua unify the tribes? Not your Yeshua. No. <laughs> your Yeshua did not unify the tribes. Our Yeshua. Our Yeshua, he had a little speech, man. It's pretty beautiful. I don't know if you missed it. You might have missed it, man. <laughs> then spoke Joshua to Hawa. In the day when Hawa delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalon, and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed. You see, our Joshua commands the sun, my naga. Your Joshua wants to be the son. Well, if your Joshua is the son, then who has the uh who has the keys, man? The son isn't making Joshua stand still. Joshua, our Joshua, not your New Testament. I'm in Joshua chapter 10. This is Moshe's Joshua. This is the Joshua that led you to the promised land that fought all the hijacks to get you there, but you don't remember this Joshua. You want to represent that spiritual Joshua. Let me tell you something, man. 
These hijacks today, they ain't worried about no Jesus coming back. They love Jesus. But if Joshua returns, man, if this Joshua come back, they are going to pass the they're going to pass out out of just thinking of what is what could possibly happen to them, man. They're going to pass out out of remembering something in their past about what Joshua did to their hijacked ancestors. Joshua has fought so many battles for Israel. Led you to the promised land. Made the sun stand still. Makes the moon stand still. He even parts the Jordan. Leads you on dry land. To the promised land. And you don't remember Joshua? You want the phantom, the reflection, or the duplication? Say it with me. Anatoly for the man called. Get the true chronology, because my Naga, little Naga, little Naga, Yeshua the divider. Yo, Joshua don't play in chronology, man. You haven't caught up with that yet. I, I know you're surfing our wave. I know you dig on the stuff we have dug on, and you're trying to duplicate our wave however you can to fit your, you know, uh, concept, right? Concept. concept abstract idea general notion occur in the mind and speech or in thought fundamental building blocks of thought so you're trying to put together a couple of fundamental building blocks man you want something fundamental man Joshua chapter 3, Hosea chapter, Yeshua chapter 3, however you want to say it. <laughs> Let's go to Yeshua chapter 3, huh? You want something concrete that you can't twist no matter how much uh, you don't care about the written word when it's convenient. When it's a body bag, it's a, uh, oh, I, I don't, yeah, you know, that's just written. Yeah. I see your flow. We peep in you, man. For the children of Israel shall sit solitary many days without king, without prince, without sacrifice, without pillar, without effort, teraphim. And after the children of Israel return, seek the creator and David their king. Not Yeshua. You don't have a scripture like this. You don't have a script hijack free and you can't say that oh it's just written to hijack us because ain't none of these christians doing this ain't none of these christians reading this and ain't none of these christians teaching us this ain't no camp teaching us this ain't nobody teaching us this matter of fact you know what bro where's your face man i need to look at you man i need to look at your face bone man on this one there you go there's your mug you look like you're thinking you look like you're thinking about a concept. You look like you have a general notion about something right now, man. You know what, man? Nobody's checking for David, man. The stuff you're doing, when you want to keep the real cold, man, you want to keep the real cold, man. Hey, we about to get some of this, man. You <laughs> I told you, man, we're going to feature you, man. It's all good. Hey, you want to keep the real cold? You need to think about who wrote the code. Anah ben David? Moses? Moses by Menides? If you want to keep the real cold, you need to know who you're dealing with. You look lost, man. You look confused. And I know it, within that mind bone, man, there's a spark, man. There's brilliance in there, man. So I'm not over here just to, you know, bag on you, man. You know, I'm just here because you, you called out our perspective. And then you say that you got the real code. And then you're going to refer us to Mother Nature. 
and say, yeah, the laws, yeah, you know, do that, but really get in touch with this, but still do that, but really get in touch with this. And that's just written down, you know, your teachers are alive, not dead. And dead refers to the code, but you got a real code, right? You got a live code, right? You got the ocean and the mountain. Those oceans, that mountain, remember the waters are in cold, right? Hawa told them their boundaries, right? They're in cold. The mountains, every, the trees are in cold. Now, the only reason our code has to be written today is because we've forgotten everything. And we can't just tune into the frequency. So Exodus 20 got us in cold now. Tell me what part of this Exodus 20 is dead, you know? I mean, for real, for real. <laughs> Come on, man. Who's at the right hand? <laughs> hey, mama's at the right hand. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget about mama. Mama is your breath. Mama is your ruah. Hey, don't forget about mama, man. Let me check out this proverb right quick, man. You know, I'm, I'm surfing the wave with y'all, man. Ain't no rush, man. Ain't no time. Ain't no time, man. Only the wave. When you talk about mother, your earthly mother, your mother has a law, my naga. You can't skip over the code and run to mama. Mama don't deal with everybody. I know you think you are smart, but you clearly aren't putting this together. And you damn sure ain't doing it fast enough. Because you're in our tailspin, bro. Trying to skip, a, <laughs> skip ahead on some bonus rounds. Hey, I got a thought. Here's my concept. I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to wrap up. Genghis Khan, Cibola, Seven Cities of Gold, and Preston John in one video released tomorrow. While proving that the children of Lud are the omen. We'll get that for the dismount. Don't even trip, man. That's light work. That's that's light work, man. He's trying, though. And instead of surfing our way, right, <laughs> he wants to just zero in on this Lud omic situation. Instead of building, he wants to throw our perspective out there instead of letting the people build on it themselves. But I guess like any debate platform, you want to say what you're going to debate, right? Because you're going to explain the concept of Genghis Khan. You're going to explain the abstract idea that occurs in your mind. Your beliefs. Beliefs. You're going to explain your beliefs, right? You're going to explain your beliefs about Genghis Khan, the cities of gold, Cibola and Pre you ain't ever said Cibola until you started surfing the wave in the back of the class, Lil Naga. You see, man, I'm I'm just 41 years old, man, but I'm your elder, my Naga. So you're going to have to uh, put some respect on my perspective. You ain't got to agree with this and agree with that. But don't try to bottle up my perspective like this, man. That's just disrespectful, man. Because I never said that all Amex have to be Israelites. I've never made that claim. I've never said that. I'm surfing the wave of the Israelite connection. That's it, the connection. And whether some are this tribe, I'm sure some could be loved. Why? Why not? You're talking about a title, man. Some people under that title could go under Lud. Some could go under such and such and such and such. All ain't got to be one thing. You ain't got to talk about wrapping up our perspective like we said this must be that. We're investigating. And you're jamming us up, man. Matter of fact, you're jamming up your own people. Because you're jammed up. You want to jam every damn body up. But you ain't rocking with mama. Because if you was rocking with mama... Hey, does wisdom 
Does not wisdom call and understanding put forth her voice? In the top of the high places, by the way, where the paths meet. In the way, by the way, where the paths meet, she stands beside the gate at the entry of the city. At the entry of the city. Oh, what does this remind you of, my naga? Who's been surfing the wave with that picto paleo, man? We're going to get back on the air. Tology, you know, dodge the wave. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Surf the wave, dodge your own hijack. Because, you know, clearly he has his own uh, Jesus hijack. Y'all still got that? That's cool. But it ain't, you know. And if you got uh, if you got any sense, man, you'll start paying attention. It's the fourth wave. I, I can't be nice, you know. I'm cool, but I'm not like, you know. You know we ain't got to be nice, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not in my contract to be nice with you and to you. I don't know you. I don't know you, man. All right? You got to earn that shit. You know, this ain't no nice party. I'm here to, you know, drop the drop, my noggin. You know what I'm saying? And be respectful and show respect. And because I show respect, I get respect. That's how we flow. Folks that's out of order, they get checked. That's how we flow. We do this in real time. This ain't no bullshit. This ain't no YouTube, man. This is real spirit with me. This is real spirit. I don't know what lens you're seeing through, but with me, my nagi, out here, <laughs> this is real spirit. I ain't bullshitting, bro. So, mama's at the gate. You might just read this off the page and say, all right, a left, bot, gone, dog, ha. Man with arms raised. That man, they got it wrong. That man is not Christ. <laughs> Christ hanging on a tree. That's Christ hanging on a tree. Nah, man. This is mama with her arms raised. This is your breath. This is your inhale. Inhale, my naga. Try to inhale without mama. Go. Try to get your security without getting your breath, my naga. You think a dragon can breathe fire without the breath? Who's the breath? Christ? Yeshua? Your shoe is hijacking everything. Your shoe is at the right hand. Your shoe is the, the spirit. Your shoe is the son. Your shoe is all these things. He's taking mama's place. He's taking Joshua's, David's place. He's taking everybody's place, right? No, he took God's place, right? Because he Christ is God, right? He took every, he hijacked the whole board, man. Damn, thought is a hell of a trickster. How you rocking with something that just hijacked everything who's at the gate mama with her arms raised she gives you that look that reveal that breath this is just picked up paleo man you can't be against a ha you can't be against the wa not if you uh you know hijack free So you got your hawa, you got your breath and your security, and then you get your food. Before you get your food, you need your security and your breath. When you inhale, that's feminine. When you exhale, that's masculine, my naga. Don't you get it? Ain't y'all getting it by now? You can't take an inhale or an exhale without that hawa, that existence. And when you look up the picto paleo word or primitive Hebrew root word, hawa, which they say, hey, yeah. Uh, which you have to keep going into your frequency. Dodge the hijacks. It's right here in your face in Picto Paleo. Hawa. Then you get your zanza, your food, your cut off. You, you cut everything off because you got what you need. <coughs> I'm doing too much yelling, man. You know what I mean? Okay, but I'm just passionate about this. And it's ain't about you, bro. It's about that hijack ruwa, that hijack ruwa, that hijack anointed. When Hawa clearly said, "Ain't no other savior but me." Now that must be your spirit. Now that must be God. Now that must be, you know, what I'm saying everything, right? That's your spirit. That's your creator. That's what's sitting at the right hand. He's sitting at the right hand and he's God. Come on, man. 
How you gonna set the right hand? And he's got though. You mean he splits off for the visual effect? Come on, man. Hijack City, man. Your mama has a cold. In the top of the high places, by the way, where the paths meet, she stands beside the gate at the entry of the city. At the coming in at the door, she cries aloud unto you, O men. I call and my voice is to the sons of men. O you thoughtless, understand prudence. And you fools, be you of an understanding heart. Here, for I will speak excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things, for my mouth shall utter truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, and there is nothing perverse or crooked in them. But you say, hey, everyone lies. I lie. You know, sometimes I make a mistake. I lie. Not with mama. You know what I'm saying? Like, in this investigation, it should be pure water. Nothing perverse or crooked should be in your mouth, man. You're telling us about a Jesus story, man, that's very perverse and crooked. You want a new hero? You're bringing us into a new hero? You want us to get into a new hero, man? That's very perverse and crooked. To try to, you know, standardize this new situation for the tribe. Because mama got a code. She got a code. This is nothing perverse. There is nothing perverse. All the words in my mouth are in righteousness. What do you mean you lie? We'll get to it, man. You know, I'm going to get to it. This is my drop, man. I'm sure you're going to make 12,000 rebuttals, man, because, hey, this is what you wanted in the first place. I'm going to give it to you because the benefit outweighs the cost. The benefit of the clarity for the tribe all across the plain is worth all your foolishness, all of your abominable lips and all of your wickedness and all of your perversion. Twisted, crooked snake in the back of our classroom. You might say, drop, maybe you're going a little hard. I, I see that. I see. Let's go. You'll see, man. Let's go. <laughs> Y'all know I don't just, you know, for no reason. So follow me now. They are all plain to him that understands, man. You should be getting this and write to them that find knowledge. Oh, nah, but hey, the code is just dead, you know. I mean, you know, it's a lot. It's, it's alive, but it's perfect, but not as perfect as your Christ spirit, right? Receive my instructions not, and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies, man. Ama, not just your earthly mother, your Ruach. Don't you get it? But you just sold your Ruach to Christ because that's Christ. It's all Christ. Christ is, Christ is everywhere. Ama is everywhere, man. Because if Christ was everywhere, you know where he'll be, man. <laughs> he'll be right here within the first seven days or seven letters or seven days. Because the seventh letter is the seventh day. It's the cutoff day. Nourishment, right? You got your food, right? But first you got your hawa after you walk through the door. After you walk with your feet, your foot, you gathered, you walk. But first you needed a floor plan bro and your floor plan is whack because your strong power is christ your strong power is yeshua not the creator and so your whole perspective is whack and that's why i tell you your whole perspective is whack because you never had a chance man you never even walked through the door wisdom is better than rubies man and all things desirable are not to be compared unto her. Wisdom dwells with prudence and finds out knowledge of devices. The fear for wise to hate evil. What's evil? 
Evil is not keeping the code. That's why we said Exodus 20, God is in code. Counsel is mine. Wait, pride and pride and arrogancy in the evil. Are we talking about pride and we talking about arrogance like a motherfucker? We talking about arrogance, man, because this this uh, divider, right? Because this ain't no unifying frequency, man. Four three two is the unity, my nigga. Our perspective, you can't speak on that. You're going to have to let them get that if they want that. But since you think your concept or your idea or your belief, <laughs> you know, it's going to, uh, you know, all be wrapped up in one segment, right? Your, your belief in Genghis Khan, all this is all you need to, you know, twist our wave up, try to twist your way in. Let's let these leers play on us, man. Let's go, man. Let's go. We got some leers, man. Let me check out my leers, man. Oh, we got some heart. We got David's heart, man. Okay, love too. Peregrinati. Peregrinati. Let go. Let's get that, man. Let's get that. Pride and arrogance and the evil way. Wait, the fear of Hawaii is to hate evil, which is the pride and arrogance. So evil means that you're going against the code. We're saying over and over again, and you know what we're saying. But, you know, it's that block. It's that block for you and everybody that's, you know, that's on this Jesus. The same Jesus situation that they came here with. You own. You own that. That's the evil way, my knock. The forward mouth do I hate. We about to hear this forward mouth. Don't get it twisted. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. Power is mine. Nah, that's all Christ now. All that is Christ. By me, kings reign. And princes dec decree justice. By me, princes rule, cons rule, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. How do you love mama? You got to keep the code. And we ain't talking about your spiritual code. We're talking about your code of conduct, your code of ethics. Not slaying each other is a big deal when it comes to our unity, man. Even to this day, especially to this day, not smoking on that pack. Dead homie, this dead homie, that is big right now, man. So to tell us that our code is dead and forget about that, just connect with Mother Nature, the hood can't hear that. That's why it's written. So jabronis like you can't say, hey, let's all be one. Let's stare at the water. You got to you gotta let the Naga know that our power is literally contingent upon our doing these things. Not just dead deeds, but choosing life. Dead deeds is going against this life. Choosing up is doing these particular actions that yield a particular fruit. Because the word is very powerful. I love them that love me and those that seek me earnestly shall find me. You're not even seeking, man. You're seeking Christ, man. You're not seeking your framing and shaping, man. Riches and honors are with me. Yeah, enduring riches, righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, man. You got that fruit? And my produce and choice silver, I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and that I may fill their treasuries. Hawa made me in the beginning of his way. The first of his works of old, man. So if mama is the first of his works of old, 
then when it comes to cr creation, right, creating uh, the earth and the people and all these dragons that you call angels, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure mama was equally involved in this creation if she was already there from the very beginning, right? You think she did nothing? I mean, what percent would you give wisdom when it came to the creation? Because in the book of Genesis, Barashit, Barashit, it literally says with wisdom, not in the beginning. It says with wisdom, I created with wisdom. Mama, you want to discount mama? Use a fool. You want to discount David? <laughs> You're definitely a fool. But the Christian way is to discount David because, you know, they have a new hero, a new romance. The real Joshua <laughs> don't have no beef with David. The real Joshua is just rocking with the coal, rocking with the covenant and making sure you get there, my noggin. The fake New Testament Joshua has to step on David's toes because he's hijacking even God himself. Even mama, even the Ruach, the spirit, it all becomes Christ. The son is Christ. Everything's Christ. The only son, firstborn son, the sinless man. What about the other four? What about Yeshai, Amram, Benjamin? What about Kiliab? The four from the Tanakh, man. You forgot about that? You forgot about Joshua? Man, Joshua chapter 3. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come here, hear the words of Hawaii, your power. And Joshua said, Hereby you shall know that the living Hawaii is among you. This is Joshua. This ain't Jesus. The living power is among you, says Joshua. And that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanite, Hittite, Hivite, Perizzite, Girgashite, Amorite, Jebusite. Joshua was on the front lines, giving the people hope that Hawaii will drive out our enemies. Behold the Ark of the Covenant of Hawaii, of all the earth, passes on before you over the Jordan. Now therefore take you 12 men out the tribes of Israel for every tribe of man. This is where they get the Jesus, got the 12 disciples. Joshua also has 12 out of Israel, every tribe of man, 12 out of the tribes, my God. one out of every tribe. For it shall come to pass when the souls of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of Hawah, Hawah of all the earth shall rest in the water of Jordan and that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off. This is what Hawaii is doing for Joshua, man. What does Hawaii do for Jesus? Brings him back to life, you say? Oh, he walks on water. He walks on water. You know who also walks on water, man? <laughs> oh, man, y'all remember that uh, Benjamin of Tadula, right? We surfing the wave, man. Hey, forget about it, man. Forget about it, man. Man, this is a victory lap. It's just a victory lap. Y'all remember the Benjamin of Tadula, man. Who else walks on water, man? You know, this is breaking down the Babylonian captivity, the Persian, you know what I'm saying, uh, the exilarchs during the Persian captivity, this king that stood up and says, yeah, man, I am the Khan. And didn't he walk on water? Hold up, man. It's, you know, it's been a while. I mean, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe King David didn't walk. Did King David walk on water or not? Man, y'all tell me, man, because I just seem to remember. Oh, man, there's a lot of keywords in this thing that we got to get back into this drop, man. We got to get back into this drop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't King David walk on water?
Yeah. Didn't King David walk on water, man? Hey, man, let me let the Lear play for this one. Let me get it bigger for the little homie in the back. Okay. Yeah, they got this David L. Roy popping up, right? I know you see. My wave servers, you remember this drive, man. Ten years ago, there arose a man of the name. This is Benjamin of Tadula, man. You do the recon. Get in the drive library. Lil Naga, get in the drive library. There rose a man named David L. Roy. That means king, man. Roy means king. So we're talking about King David of Amaria. Now, if you put a C right after the I, you have Amarica, right? We're just talking about the land of Preston John, but let's just fall back and imagine all this happening in Amaria. I mean, America, you know. Who has studied under the Prince of Captivity, his diet under Eli? president of the college of John Jacob in the city of Baghdad and who became an excellent scholar being well versed in Moses mosaic law the code right the cold code you know not your spiritual code right because we believe that when we separate the hijack and connect directly with the great spirit that's all the spiritual code we need the spiritual connection we need in the decisions of the rabbis in the Talmud, in the Talmud, understanding also the profane sciences, the language and the writings of the Mohammedans, and the scriptures of the magicians, the magi, the enchanters, he made up his mind to rise up in rebellion. So this David O'Roy, King David, rose up in rebellion against the king of Persia to unite and collect the Jews who live in the mountains of Kaftan and with them to engage in wars with all the Gentile. So he went to war against all hijacks, man, making the conquest of Jerusalem his final object. He gave signs to the Jews by false miracles, right? Were they false miracles? Well, we about to find out and assured them, the Lord has sent me to conquer Jerusalem and to deliver you from the yoke of the Gentiles. Some of the Jews did believe in him, and called him Messiah. Just like Jesus, man. Mashiach, huh? When the king of Persia became acquainted with these circumstances, he sent and summoned David into his presence. He later went without fear and when brought before the court. He was asked, are you the king of the Jews? Uh-oh, that sounds a lot like JC. Yeah, I was shy, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Aren't you the king of the Jews? To which he made an answer and said, Upon this, the king immediately, oh, my bad, he said, I am. Aren't you the king of the Jews? I am. Right? So he's the con. Upon this, the king immediately commanded that he should be secured and put into prison where the captives were, ke were kept who are in prison for life. So he was put in jail for life. That's death, man. You got a life sentence, that's death. So he was pretty much put to die, right? He was, <laughs> he died, you know, he, he's gone. He's he's in jail for life. Situated in the city of Debaristan on the banks of Kazal Ozian, which is a broad river after a lapse of how many days? Uh-oh, say it with me. <laughs> Yosef, say it, man. Typology. Three days? So he... He died and came back to life. <laughs> How did he come back to life from being in prison for life? After a lapse of three days, when the king sat in council to take the advice of his nobles and officers respecting the Jews who had rebelled against his authority, David appeared among them, having liberated himself from the prison without human aid. Without human aid, he broke free. 
from the king of Persia's prison. To which David made an answer. But he said, when the king beheld him, he inquired, who has brought you here? Or who has set you free, man, to liberty? To which David made an answer, my own mama, my own wisdom and subtlety. For verily I fear neither you nor your servants. The king immediately commanded that he should be seized. But his servants answered and said, we see him not. We see him not, my nigga. So did King David walk on water? Well, he uh, was put he was put in the jail into life imprisonment. He died and came back in three days, man. He broke out by his own mama, his own wisdom, his own mama, my own wisdom and subtlety. Hey, man, my own. I mean, ain't that what Solomon is praying for? Wisdom and discernment, my nigga. For verily I fear neither you or your servants. And then the king asked for him to be seized. And they, his servants said, we see him not. He disappeared. He disappeared. And are aware of his presence only by hearing the sound of his voice. The king was very much astonished at David's exceeding subtlety. Who thus addressed him, I now go my own way. So he spoke from behind the veil, right? He's he's in he's invisible. It's starting to sound like Preston John a lot, right? Because we're talking about the Persian captivity. We're still talking about the 1300s, 1200s, all playing with the chronology. They added over a thousand years to you, my naga, Lil Naga. And when you put them thousand years back, there ain't no room for no JC story, man. You got Joshua, the real Joshua, popping off around what? 1100 right around that you got david popping off around 1200 press the john where's your jay where, where does your jesus fit if joshua was just popping off in the 1100s i'll wait that's moses that's joshua all right you got david right after that where does jesus play where does this new testament no the roman history is a farce <laughs> it's false Greek history is false. All of them is hijacking our cons, man. They're hijacking our drop. That's why you got parallel timelines in history. And they pushed your history back a thousand years in the BCs. Come on, man. It's trickery. It's sorcery. You got to wake up out of here. But you got to have wisdom. Because they by my own wisdom, David broke free. By your own wisdom, Anaga, you could break free. By mama, but you got to be in tune with mama. Who's mama? You saying she ain't your breath? She ain't your spirit? The breath ain't the spirit. I, I thought Hawa breathed directly into the nostrils of Adam. I thought that was a direct connection. If it's not the spirit, then what did Hawa breathe into the nostrils of Adam? That breath, that ha, ha is the breath so that you can have a revelation, man. You can be revealed to get your security. You could be hooked, man. You could be anchored, man, in reality. Let's go. <clears throat> Let's pop off, man. I'm going to get my tea. I had to get I had to get it, man. You know what I mean? And we just getting started. We just talking about mama, the framer, the shaper. I mean, you're talking Joshua, who's literally making the waters part, the sun stand still. You're talking your high. Which means you're talking your wild man, your seraphim, your angels. And we're gonna get back on that concept. Oh, there we go. So does King David walk on water? He became invisible. 
we see him not. We are aware of his presence only by hearing the sound of his voice. The king was very much astonished at King David's exceedingly intelligence or sub subtility. Who thus addressed him, I now go my own way. And he went out, followed by the king and all his nobles and servants to the bank of the river where he took his shawl, spread it upon the water, and crossed it thereupon. And at that moment he became visible again. And all the servants of the king saw him cross the, the river, cross the water on his shawl, man. You know, like a little rug or a little, you know, little scarf. <laughs> so Jesus walked on water. King David walks on water. He was pursued by them in boats. They had to come after him on a boat, man, because he's walking on the water. But without success, they all confess that no magi upon earth, no magician could equal him. Sounds a lot like the Preston. Sounds a lot like the Preston. This David Elroy. Does King David walk on water? He spread his shawl and just walk, man. I mean, that qualifies for walking on water. Even the Persian even the Persian servants of the king of Persia said no magi upon earth could equal him. There's no equal to David, man. So why do you just want to discount the connection? <laughs> you know, why do you want to discount the connection Written clear in the charge of Hosea 3 that we're going to return, seek our creator and David. Why, man? Because he turns invisible, because he walks on water. <laughs> or because he has the keys, the keys. See, Hawa got a very special relationship with David, man. And when you find yourself against David... Yeah, you, you in the bads, man. You against da, you against Dawi. You throwing stones at David. Hey, you know what happened to the last jabroni that threw stones at David? Should we read about it? Should we get in that first king, second king? I mean, I mean, should we read about the hecklers, man, that throw stones at David? <laughs> you know David had a hit list he gave to his uh, son Solomon, right? Certain certain things you shouldn't do, you know. You you definitely shouldn't uh, throw stones at the Prest. Heckle the Prest. Say the Prest is not good enough for you. Oh, he does stuff I don't like. As if you can walk a mile in the Prest of Juan's shoes. Through all his mistakes and through all his triumph, can you walk in can you walk an inch in the shoes of Preston John? This ain't no concept. This ain't no concept. Joshua ain't no concept. Part in the water ain't no concept. It's not a not it's not an abstract idea. You can't wrap that up in one video, man. You can't get us to, you know, understand what's popping off with this parting of the water and how it connects to us today. Because you're so caught up in the other Joshua that you don't give this no mind, you don't give this no play. This is happening right here in America. And it means nothing to those who are putting another power before their power. And it came to pass when the people removed from the tents to pass over the Jordan, the priests that bore the Ark of the Covenant being before the people. And when they that bore the Ark were coming to the Jordan, the feet of the priests that bore the Ark were dipped in the, in the brink of the water for the Jordan overflows all its banks by the time of harvest that the waters which came down from above stood that's the waterfall my noggin 
the waterfall stood still and rose up in one heap a great way off from Adam, the city that is beside Zarathon, and those that went down towards the Sea of Abarah, even the Salt Sea, were wholly cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho, and the priests that bore the Ark of the Covenant of Hua stood firm on ground, dry ground. This is rocking with Hawashua. But you don't represent that unity here, man. The unifying of the tribe to cross on dry ground. Do you represent this? While all Israel passed over on dry ground until all the nation were passed clean over the joy. A unifier. Uh, are you unified with this? The coal, the covenant, or is just staring out at you know Mother Nature? Is is that going to do it for you? Is that going to unify us so we can cross over, you know, on dry ground? Can you bear the Ark of the Covenant if you're not keeping the cold? And whose cold is it, my noggin? Let's go. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning over ever the earth was. Wait, mama was set up from everlasting from the beginning. I wisdom, right? Right. I was set up, verse 23, Psalms 8, from the everlasting. This is what they this is what they give to Christ, this title, this everlasting power that's always been there from the beginning. He must be God. How can Christ be set up from the everlasting and wisdom? Sounds like someone is hijacking Ama. Why do we need both? I'll wait. Why do we need both? Apparently, in the Pictopaleo, we don't need both. We just need the Ha and we just need the Wa to get the Zan. But y'all want to Yah, Yah, Yah it up, man. Y'all want to try to make the Yah the Yah, huh? Worship, huh? All of this is the creator. Every single expression here is Hawa. All of this is Hawa. But when you're talking about the frequency, the the primitive root of existence, you're talking about Hawa. This is existence. Hawa, the primitive root, existence. Hawa. What did they do? What did they do? How did they get to their Yahweh? How'd they get here? What do they do to the primitive root? 1869, hypothetical reconstruction of the tetragrammaton based on the assumption. So they had to base this Yahweh on an assumption, man. That the tetragrammaton is the imperfective of the Hebrew verb. But while they're assuming this tetragrammaton is the imperfective of the perfect Hebrew word Hawa, which is earlier form of Heya, which is the was or is in the sense of who is the existing. You don't have a future is, it is, is, is. Oh, I put the Yah on for future tense. What other, what other name do you put the Yah on to put you into the future? Hey, my name is Bobby. Call me Yah Bobby because I'll be in the future, man. I'm in the future, baby. Call me Yah Bobby. Nah, man. The one who is is the one who is. The existing is the existing. And the Hawa is the earlier form of Heya and Yahweh and your Yah. You reverse the Yah, you get the Ha. Reverse, reverse, break the curse. Your Ha, your Wah. 
is the existing. Your ha, your wa is the breath of security because you need a secure breath to exist to get your food, nourishment, and your cut off day and your cut off frequency. Cut off from what? You keep going with the story. What are you dividing? What's outside? <laughs> What's contained, man? Then you get your yacht or your hand or your work that's being put in. But that yah ain't your yad. Yad, the Hebrew yad is not the yah. They're putting the yah in later. They got their own yah. 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 You got to at least account for the fact that they got their own yah. And they wouldn't do this to the name of the creator, but they can do it to yah because this ain't the name of the creator. It's an exclamation of defiance or dismissal. So when you see Yahweh, <laughs> Yahweh is Yahweh. What's the Wah? What's the Wah? The Wah is your security. That's your frame and that's your father. The Ha is your mama, breath. So when their exclamation of defiance, their Yah is defined against your father, your security which is by default defined against your mother. This is an exclamation of defiance to the extreme. Yah is bad enough. Yahweh, oh man. But you want Yahweh, right? Come on, man. Come up out of her, man. Because we're talking Hawa, which is the existence, which is the ha -wa. Who's the ha? Who's the breath? Who's the everlasting breath, man? Who's the everlasting from the beginning? Or ever the earth was when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no foundations abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled. Before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth. Nor the fields, nor the beginning of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he set a circle upon the face of the of the deep when he made firm the skies above when the fountains of the deep showed their might when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not transgress his commandment so as much as you don't want to keep the cold young naga the water that you are calling an angel is under a commandment not just a spiritual commandment but it is written, my naga, that the waters ain't going to transgress. When he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him. Whoa. Who's at the right hand? Ama, wisdom says she was by him. As a nursling, I was daily all delight, playing always before him. Framer Shaper, playing in his habitable earth, and my delights are with the sons of men. Now, therefore, you children hearken unto me, for happy are they that keep my ways. You can't talk about the earthly mother without talking about her ways. And you can't say Exodus 20 ain't cold enough for you, young Lil. Naga, you got a bright future, man, but not if you keep thinking like this. Yeah, we learn a lot from observ observation. We learn a lot from being in cold, period, and knowing that that which, which, which we call nature is a cold itself, a living cold. And that which are, you know, it's, it's being kept by us, that which we are putting as our charge to not put a power before a power gives us the same life that you see around you. Because you ain't going to be able to see that life if you keep hijacking yourself with another power. What's the point of enjoying uh, Mother Nature if you don't have no life? And how can you have a life if you ain't got no cold? 
And what's a code without rule number one? Are you Yeshua, the unifier, or the divider, you know? Like I said, we're about to play this clip. I just want to speak up for mama. I want to speak up for Drop Nation when you see stuff like this. And I'm going to go further into the comments and then go back into, you know, his his uh, his testimony. But just know that when you say our code is dead, we're talking about the ways of mama. Hear the instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Happy is the man that hears me, hearkens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. Y'all too busy looking for Christ, man. Christ is God. Christ is the spirit. The Hakodesh Ruach is Christ. Sounds good, but you're wrong. Because Christ is, means the anointed. And who's the anointed? Who's your only savior, man? I, even I, am a wild, and beside me there is no savior. For whoso finds me finds life. The code is life. It's not just what you see in the beautiful, serene environment and that which you call angels around you speaking to you. Stop it, man. Now you're just being silly. You're being a false witness. Anyone can say that nature's speaking to him, right? But not everyone can actually be in code. You want to obtain favor of Hawa, but he that misses me wrongs his own soul, my naga. This is now this part is for you. Because I don't want you to wrong your own soul, man. I want you to connect directly to the creator with no hijack so that you can see clearly that wisdom is at the right hand. Wisdom is from the everlasting. Wisdom has her ways, which are the code. When you listen, if you love the code, you love the ways of Ama Abba, frame of shaper, you obtain favor. But if you miss that, you wrong your soul. And they that hate me love death. So we're talking about something that's live or dead, right? Live or dead. You could put it in all caps. It ain't mean that you real, bro. Right? He could put the code with a lowercase, right? Because that's what he's thinking about the code. It's dead. But his realness, we about to get this realness. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Matter of fact, let's just get it, man. Let's just get it. And then I'll, I'll get the comment. I'll get the rest of this for the dismount, man. <laughs> We're surfing the wave, man. Hope you enjoy a teachable moment. I'm going to play the whole thing through. I ain't going to interrupt you. I'm not going to tell nobody your perspective. I'm going to let you speak for yourself. And then we're going to go through it one more time for the dismount. <laughs> Replay. Shalom, shalom, all praises to the most high. I know it's said. But look at all this, man. Lego. I'm out here, Howard Beach. <coughs> it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm in uh, the area, so of course the beaches are very, very clean, and I'm very happy that I can actually walk barefoot. Uh, this, I'm right here, just uh, next to the Atlantic Ocean. This is how I get my lessons, man. This is how you stay humble. For all those in the know, you know what I mean, man. I get, I get my lessons. It's, and uh, this angel right here is teaching me how to be humble. Right? I know you hear this, man. It's so it's, I wish you could smell this air. This don't even smell like the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean usually smells like garbage. But, you know, this morning, it's smelling good. It's smelling good. But... Our teachers are alive. You know, the scriptures are supposed to lead us back to the Most High, back to the Earthly Mother, back to Matsa. Supposed to lead us to them. The scriptures are just supposed to remind us, right? It's supposed to carry us to them. 
there's no book that can save you. There's no book that is going to, you know, be your end all be all. You have these books so that you can practice what's in the books, but it's more than that. You have to do both. You know, as I said in the other video, it's more than just the law, but it's not, uh, it's, 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 I'm not coming against the law. Mm. I'm pretty much saying uh, the law is level one mm. and level two is the spiritual. You have to be both. You have to be both if you want to reach perfection. You have to be able to practice the law and you have to understand why the law is perfect, right? But what's even more perfect mm. is, the per is, the, is the entities who made the law. And these angels that the Most High has put in charge of teaching us while we're here, these angels have never left. These angels will not lie to us. These angels will not edit any books. These angels will not speak out of context. So you need to be taught by your living teachers, not by your dead teachers. You can be taught by them. But your dead teachers should lead you to your living teachers. And living teachers are not men. Men will lie to you. I will lie to you. <coughs> this won't. This won't. This won't. They won't lie. They won't lie. So you got to get in tune with your real teachers. Because as... Mata is in all of these angels. He is fused with these angels. So he is teaching us through these angels, through the earthly mother's angels. He is teaching us. He has, he is, he is all of this. He is everything. He's everything. You know, if you guys don't know, Mata is pretty much the form of the Messiah and the Holy Spirit as one. Mm. That is who he is. Uh, when he came on the earth, you know, he was the son. And then when he was stabbed in his rib, mm. uh, the Holy Spirit then came on the earth. Gotcha. So pretty much finished the job, but he is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy <laughs> Spirit comes from him. And he is the Air Kadeshoi. Because uh. he has fused with the Air Kadeshoi. So he literally is everything. Mm. He's everything. He is everywhere. Right? And he's not only in a book. So if you're saying, well, I don't believe that, uh, this is what the scripture says, even though uh, this this is written by man. Mm. So who do you listen to? Do you listen to uh, the Holy Spirit or do you listen to men? <laughs> I'm not saying don't follow the scriptures. Mm. That's, that's, I'm not saying that mm -hmm, at all. Mm -hmm. I'm saying make the right judgment. Look at this. Beautiful mm. man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, come on. See my face. Wait, what's, what's good with it, boy? Hey. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, Let's go, man. Look at the look at the pigeon, man. I see it, man. Is I see it. Pigeon? Nope. Um, but who are you going to believe? Don't believe me. I'm not telling you to believe me. I lie all the time. Ah. Uh, I'll, I lie uh, by mistake. Okay, okay. Right? I'm a man. I make mistakes. Matsu doesn't make mistakes. The Eureka Doshoi not make mistakes. Hmm. Your earthly mother does not make mistakes. So, depend on them. Man can make mistakes. They can make a mistake in the translations. You do understand that our scriptures were destroyed and rewritten multiple times, right? And they're rewritten by scribes who are very good at what they do. But can't they make mistakes? They can make mistakes, can't they? I'm saying that it's a possibility. Do not think that it's not a possibility because it damn sure is a possibility. And that's why we have these angels. Only only the righteous can have access to these angels. So you need to work on getting yourself right with these angels. Don't worry about anything else, man. Don't worry about, well, let me get into this translation and that translation above, uh, th above this. This was really important, right? This was really important. Not all that other stuff. That mm. other stuff is good. You should do it. You should study. Mm -hmm. Right? Study everything. Do not leave, let things slip through the cracks. You know, use the Air Kadeshoi to understand the scriptures. Use the scriptures to understand the Air Kadeshoi. 
It's a symbiotic relationship that is balance. Keep the balance. I'm going to start hijacking the keep the code. Because oh. this is the real code you're supposed to keep. Not that not, not that 66. <laughs> oh, man, I got I got nine seconds left. I said I was not going to. All right, nine seconds. Let's go. Or 40 book Torah to not only nonsense. No, this is the real code. Keep the code. Shalom. Say la kala. Damn, bro. And honestly, bro, even with all the stuff we about to read and all the back and forth little stuff, and, you know, that was just a little time I put in, you know, just to, you know, let you know that I see you, man. And, you know, it's all good. I, I know you bright. I, I know you can pop off. But that ego, though, bro, ain't nothing worse, you know, when someone is being led completely by this ego energy, you know what I'm saying, that it's trying to pass it off like they're just flowing in the wind. And a beautiful beach, hey, look at this beautiful weather, trying to get you all warm and cozy just to tell you, uh, you know, yeah, that code is good, but now that's just step one. And then try to mesh it into a, uh, oh, well, I'm not telling you not to, do that, but, you know, get the balance and throw the balance conversation so some we, we can all agree on balance, right? We can all agree that we got to, you know what I'm saying, see what a dragonfly perspective, see what with that ruach. We, 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 we can all agree that, you know, you can't just, you know, uh, read things off the top of the page. You know what I'm saying? We could all agree that you got to put discernment and stuff. So to bring it back to that same point, that don't sum up what you just said. Balance. The summary of what I'm saying is balance. But, you know, remember, these things are translations. These things are translations. Can't really trust them. But you can trust the Ruach. Well, not everyone got that Ruach, bro. Not everyone is activating, should I say, the Ruach. So Hawa is personally popping us off. And before we even get to a point that, you know, we're talking about right or wrong, because that's not what this is about. It's not about information. It's about respect. Now, you just said all that to end with this is the real code. <laughs> you said all that to end with, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm a hijack to keep the code. You literally just said that out. I'm about to play it back, man. I'm a, I'm a pause on the beautiful uh, David's harps. You know what I'm saying? And we're gonna play this right back while it's fresh, while it's still fresh, my nigga. <laughs> Let's get it from the top, top. I mean, the top, top, my nigga. Mom, shallow, mom, Let's go. All praises to the Most High, no cassette. But look at all this. Right? I'm out here, Howard Beach. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm in uh, this area, so of course the beaches are very, very clean, and I'm very happy that I can actually walk barefoot. Uh, this, I'm right here, just, uh, next to the Atlantic Ocean. This is how I get my lessons, man. This is how you stay humble. For all those in the know, you know what I mean, man. I know what you mean. It's beautiful to stare out into this vast body of water and know that, hey, man, it's so much bigger than you. We can all agree. Warm and cozy. I get, I get my lessons. It's, and uh, this angel right here is teaching me how to be humble. Now, which angel are you referring to? I mean, just for clarity, this is Drop Nation. We, we ask these questions. Who are you, you pointing to your chest? What angel is teaching you to be humble? I don't think you're as humble as you claim to be. Do you think this is a humble approach? You drop a portion of our investigation. You say that this is just going to be a, a, a great segue right into this your great release tomorrow. 
432 has a perspective that we are this, we are them. However, however, see that however right here, man? You say words don't really mean much, you know, don't trip on words. We about to read it. I mean, you know, you can get ahead of me. You know what I'm saying? You say words ain't a big deal. But this, however, is a big deal because you didn't have to do that. That's not that's not humility. So what are you learning staring out in this water? What are, what have you learned by the angel on your shoulder about humility? You know what a humble naga would have did? Hey, catch the drop, 432. The video tomorrow I drop, you know, there's going to be a great, you know, portion of that, you know, so make sure you dig on it. Shout out to 432. My nugget, what, what part is this? What part is this is you giving us honor? What part of this is this is this humility? Where do we see a humble Yeshua unifying anything? Where do we see a 432 has put down that, you know, has put it in, has got it in, man? On this investigation, make sure you get all 60 some parts of the Preston John investigation. You ain't got to be no commercial, but if you're going to bring up our perspective, at least lead them to the water. Tell them to check out the entire series. Tell them that we've been digging on this, you know what I'm saying, for so very long so that they can truly gain a real concept of our perspective, not just some snapshot that you want to give them. And you never even gave us no aha. You never said much aha four three two for everything I've learned. Yada yada yada. We don't need that. But if you're gonna bring it up about humility, that's what a humble naga does. Who's truly grateful for the work that's been put in, not by con drop, but by drop nation. I'm proud of drop nation for where we are. I think drop nation deserves some respect on our name. That's what I'm fighting for, and that's why I'm up at 5 in the morning dropping this drop. Can you dig it? So this ain't about you. It's about, you know, speaking up for our perspective that you claim you're going to, you know, give your idea, concept, your uh, abstract notion, your belief about Genghis Khan, Cibola, the seven cities of gold, and press the child. All in one sitting. That's arrogance, bro. Now, you can talk about your stuff all day, but when you bring us up, that's when we have an opportunity to speak back. You did all this speaking just now. You didn't have to mention us. You still didn't say shout out to the code keepers. I appreciate the work y'all putting in because you're unifying the frequency. You're bringing it together for real. You're supposed to be Yahshua the unifier. Where is your AHA for Drop Nation, bro? Where are you saying, man, I'm proud of y'all. I'm proud of what y'all doing. You did all this talking, and if you're going to, you know, shout out our keeping the code and then break it down and say it's the real code, how the hell is that humble? Who's teaching you humility? I got to hear that again. Somebody taught you this? Listen to know, you know what I mean, man. I get, I get my lessons. It's, and uh, this angel right here is teaching me how to be humble. Why? Okay. Right? I know you hear this, man. It's so it's oh, you can smell this air. This don't even smell like the Atlantic Ocean. Man. The Atlantic Ocean usually smells like garbage. But you know this morning it's smelling good. It's smelling good. But our teachers are alive. You know, the scriptures are supposed to lead us back to the most high, back to the earthy mother, back to Mansa. Lead us to them. Scriptures lead us back to them. Khan, so who else is the scripture? I would I would include this as scripture, right? Joshua, Yeshua, Hosea, three. Scripture should lead us back somewhere, right? So after the children of Israel return, right? We're we're returning back somewhere. We're getting led back, as you say. To seek Hawa. But then you hijack us with Jesus, bro. You take a slither of the new, they call New Testament. Syncretize that into our ancient love song. Give us a new hero, a new romance. And then do it with a fucking smile. 
Man, that serpent, that snake frequency. And we got to see through all the mirage in your face bone to see the snake swiveling around in here, acting like they're humble. Talking about we should be led back somewhere by the scripture when the scripture tells you that you're going to return, seek the creator and David. Then tell us that David, you know, yeah, he's he's righteous, but yada, yada, yada. Like you got to put David down when David is so very important to Hawa, so very important to your return. You want to get led back somewhere, but you don't want David doing it. You say that we're deifying David. I say we're following scripture that's leading us back somewhere. That's not in their Christian doctrine or your Israel Christian doctrine. It's not in their doctrine. No one is checking for David. The Christian don't care about David. The Muslim don't care about David, but they know he's real. <laughs> Jehovah's Witness, no one's talking David. The Israel on the corner ain't talking David, man. They could rock the star of David and call Christ, 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 son of David, but not rock with David, who you're supposed to be returning to after you connect to your secure breath. Hawa. We're not deifying David, fool. We got one power. It just so happens that when we return, according to scripture, when we return to Hawa, we also connect back to David, our king. You say it's crazy that I would consider David as a king, our king? That I would consider that we consider David as immortal? Managa, David is king in the end of days. We'll get more, man. Let's let's get the rest of this uh, you know, wing wham over here, man. Scriptures are just supposed to remind us, right? It's supposed to carry us to them. There's no book that can save you. There's no book that is going to, you know, be your end all be all. You have these books so that you can practice what's in the books, but it's more than that. You have to do both. You know, as I said in the other video, it's more. Do both what? All right, so after you keep the code, what else do you want to do? The spiritual side, what's that? Meditating, what? Calling on Jesus, what? Connecting with nature? Hey, bro, you look, man. We definitely, as a common senseness that you're talking about. You know, you're speaking a lot of common senseness mixed with a lot of wing wham. And that's where I think people, maybe your people get a little crossed up on this. You know, the orator, the oratization of things. Speaking it, but you're speaking in circles. You're speaking in contradictory circles. Now, you need both. Right? We need both. We need both the spiritual and the law. That's what you're trying to consider both. When we say both, we specifically are referring to, you know what I'm saying? Okay, instead of just reading this, let's investigate it. Let's put the action in. Let's put the energy in to connect the actual story so that we can connect it deeper within our spirit. So we're not just looking at it off a page, as you say, translations. We're not surfing away with David off a page, fool. And you in our classroom, so you foolish to think that we are just looking at something off the page by now. I think that's deeply disrespectful. To, to surf the wave in our press to John investigation and say that we're taking something just off the page and not connecting it all across the board to all the knockers across the plane in real time. It's just, it's just words on a page. Why do you think it says in Hosea to seek Hawaii and David? 
Or do you just think that means the descendant of the son of David, Jesus? So you try to get us what do both, but what both? You're speaking in a forked tongue, bro. You're speaking in dualities. Our both ain't your both. You're not searching. You're not seeking David, bro. You're not following nothing to do with the charge that we're on. So maybe you don't get it. But those that are returning, the Israelites that are returning, that are connecting directly with Hawa, they understand that the David investigation comes next. It's not boasted above Hawa. We don't call David God. You call Jesus God. We don't call David God. We don't we don't say that we have to go through David to get to God, to get to Hawa. We never, ever, ever say that. We say you have to go through Hawa to get to David. Because you can't even get on this David flow unless you have been in sync, resynchronized with your framer and shaper. Because by the time you get to the David flow, now you're about to find the secrets, the guarded secrets. You can't get to the guarded secrets unless you seek Hawa first. So it's the other way around. Christianity, you have to go through their hero to get to the creator. Then they say that their hero is the creator and the Ruach and the spirit and the everlasting everything. Hijack city. We say the opposite, man. You can't even connect to the David, you know what I'm saying, regal flow. You can't even get your regal, you know what I'm saying? You can't even get your stuff back, man. You can't even get none of your things back. You can't get none of your sacred things back. No pillars, no sacrifice, no prince, no effort, no terraform. You can't get it until you return and seek the creator first. Then you connect to David. So you got to connect directly to Hawa. That is our flow. Your flow is connect to Jesus, Yahweh Shai, Yeshua. Then I can get to God. Because only through the Son do you get to the Father. Christianity, Hijack 101. You connect directly through that Ruach, through that breath. Directly, just like the breath was the was breathed directly into the nostrils of Adam. You connect directly to your creator. You don't go through no hijack to get home. But once you home, hey, now you can roam. Now you can search, right? Then you come trembling if you want to know about humility. You humble. It don't look like it. It don't look like it is all I'm saying, man. I mean, let's get to some of this, man, for the dismount, man. Before I go crazy. How we doing on time? I didn't mean for this to be too long. We just saw, okay, we perfect. We good. We good. We out of here, babe. All right, so he comes with this jabroniness about my perspective. You know, I'm just taking my time with this because I really want to make this a teachable moment. I, I, it ain't about this, bro. I want it to be so anyone who stumbles on this five years from now, they can dig on it and get the drop. And it ain't about this jabroni in the back of the class, twisting like a snake. Let's go. Presta John, Cibola, Cities of Gold are not concepts. They are reality. And your guesswork is a twisting snake, restless in the back of our classroom. You can't wait to hijack something. You just said you hijacking the code. Man, I can't make this stuff up, man. I can't make this stuff up. We let things slip through the cracks. Use the air cadet way to understand the scriptures. Use the scriptures to understand the air cadet way. It's a symbiotic relationship and it is balance. Keep the balance. I'm going to start hijacking the keep the code because. I'm going to start. Why does that even come out of your mouth? Didn't we just get in Proverbs? Weren't we just reading about Amma? No forward thing comes out of my mouth when you are rocking with Hawa, with Ama, Abba, when you got that wisdom, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. What do you mean? I lie sometimes, you know, sometimes I lie. Why? 
What are you lying about? On accident, I lie. On accident? That don't sound like you got mama. If you're lying on accident. There is nothing perverse or crooked in them when you're with wisdom. My nog, nothing perverse. And the opening of my lips shall be right. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm accidentally wrong and therefore I lie. You're contradicting wisdom because you don't care about mama, man. You just want her to be the earthly mother, something you can stare at and say is talking to you in your own self-righteousness. But the opening of your, of your lips are not right. Your mouth ain't uttering truth. And your wickedness is an abomination to your own lips. Man, mama's words are in righteousness, man. Mama's words are in righteousness. You want to hijack the code? You want to hijack the code, man? There's this balance. Keep the balance. <laughs> I'm going to start hijacking the keep the code because this is the real code you're supposed to keep. Not that. Wow. Not that uh, bullshit on the paper, right? That's what you want to say. Wow, man. A hijack comes with a smile sometimes. Sometimes you get a hijack and a smile. A hijack and a smile. But over here, Exodus 20 got us in code. I said Exodus 20 got us in code. This is the real code you're supposed to keep. Not that, see, he couldn't help it. That fake Ruach in there couldn't help it because he could have said, I mean, at what point is he praising Hawa for the code, man? At what point is he going to say, the water Hawa for this beautiful law that we can keep and raise our frequency so that we can be spiritual because we're going to put no power, no other God before you. And when we do that, Hawa, we got nothing but a connection with our great spirit, our energy, frequency, and vibration, our great spirit. You can't get no more spiritual than a direct connection with your great spirit. But you don't see that. You see this as work. You see it as work. You see the Shabbat as work. You see this as not killing, not stealing <laughs> as work to you. Hey, I know not bearing false witness is work to you because you're doing it all the time. You're not in cold, which is why your frequency is off, which is why you got this double talk going on. No other gods before me. But Christ is God. Christ is God. Nah, man. You just want to hijack the code. Not that, not, not that 66 or 40 book Torah Tanakh only nonsense. So you're just mad at the Torah only keeping Nagas. The Torah only nonsense because we don't fuck with the, with the new tune. Because there ain't no room for it anywhere. Not even in chronology. Not uh, actually. Right, because when you're seeking Hawa and Dawi, it don't say Hawa and Jesus. And I don't think we need to rewrite that. I don't think that's been mistranslated. Do you? I mean, maybe, maybe you do. You think they put this here so that we don't care about Jesus, man? Jesus is on every corner. He's on every corner of the, of the ghetto. They could have just put Jesus there, King. Come on, bro. But this don't say Jesus their king, do it. Nah. David got us in coal. David's holding the coal. Because David, David got us in coal. Who is Preston John? Is he immortal? I don't know. I mean, the whole tribe was born and blessed in the womb of our mothers 562 years ago, and since then we have bathed in the fountain six times. 
John the Baptist is what you guys call him in the New Test, right? So, but who's baptizing in the fountain and regaining the age of 32? In other words, Preston John was letting the readers know by the miracles of the fountain of youth, he was 562 years old and going strong. Is he immortal? I mean, he does have the fountain of youth, my naga. Unless you think that's just mythology. But now you're running into, uh, you're kind of getting cornered here, man, because you can't just say it's mythology, can you? Because you care about mama. You care about the earthly mother. Why wouldn't you care about the fountain of water? That is the earthly mother, right? The fountain of youth. You don't think mama has water that you could regain your youth? I think you're cutting mama short. First, you cut her short by calling her just your earthly mother, not your spiritual mother, right? <laughs> it's just a physical piece of earth. Look at her. Shut up. Man, shut that. Man, man, you better shut that. You know what I'm saying? You better acknowledge your mama. You better acknowledge your mama. That's your breath. But you call Christ your, your Ruach, right? That's your Ruach, right? Charge of teaching us while we're here. These angels have never left. These angels will not lie to us. What angels? You searching, bro. You don't know what angels you're talking about. Because last time that I checked, last time that I checked, <laughs> the highest order of the angels are the seraph. And the seraph are the fiery ones, the burning ones, the dragon ones. The seraph, also mentioned in Isaiah 6, six winged dragons, Managa. Flying, Managa. Lofty, Managa. Fiery flying dragon, my knock. That's a seraph. That's the highest order of an angel. An angel of the highest order is a seraph. So you keep saying the word angel without any deeper context. All you have is a concept. A concept, man. You're leaving us with a concept, man. You're leaving us with an abstraction. An abstract idea, a general notion, a thought, a belief. You're just building some blocks, man. Some building blocks. You ain't got none. You ain't got none foundational. You're just building building blocks, man. These angels will not edit any books. These angels will not speak out of context. Stop it, man! Didn't we have angels that went bad? What do, you, what do you mean the angel won't make no mistake? What happened to the serpent in the garden, man? He was an angel in the garden, a dragon in the garden. He was cursed to be on his belly. Was he just a, a walking snake before that? Or was he a flying snake? Or was he a fire-breathing dragon? Highest order of angel. It burned. Flaming angels, right? An angel on the highest order. Six wing seraphim. Come on, man. They fly with two. Six wings, right? They fly with two. Cup two cover their feet and two cover their faces. Isaiah saw them. They were shouting, Holy, holy, holy is Hawa. The whole earth is full of his glory. Six wings. Oh, these these are people with six wings, man. You rather believe in some shit you really never seen before except the movies or something that you can find on petroglyphs, man. Winged burning ones. Flaming. The flaming swords, right? Got it. The Surah, burning ones, is used seven times in the Hebrew. Numbers 21, Deuteronomy 8, Isaiah 14, 30. Every time except in Isaiah 6, it is translated fiery serpent 
or something very close to that. Isaiah 6, it is simply left untranslated. Seraphim. Seraph. The three times it is used, the seraphim are poisonous snakes, right? So they become snakes. That Hawaii used to punish the Israelites because these dragons can <laughs> be for you or against you, whether you in code or out the code. Now you in code? Does that mean you're staring at Mother Nature and your spiritual code? Or are you literally, and I mean literally, my nage, not putting no other power before Hawa. Not making no images. Worshipping images. Wood and stone, right? Are you keeping your Shabbat? Are you doing this? Because this is going to raise your frequency. You can't discount this and say, don't keep that code. I'm going to hijack the code. This fool literally said he's going to hijack the code. Into a mother nature spiritual code. Same thing the Christian says they're going to hijack Israel's blessing into spiritual Israel, right? Now we're the Christian. We're spiritual Israel, right? No. That's hijack city. Are you honoring your mama and your father above, my naga? Are you murdering? Nah. Adultery? Nah. Stealing? Nah. Bearing false witness? Come on, man. Nah. But this bro here is bearing false witness all day on the code itself. Calling it dead. We need it's just level one to do this. It's just level one. If it's just level one, how come it ain't been done in a very, very long time? And after we achieve this level, my naga, what happens next? We get, we get to level two. We start appreciating nature. Or can you be in code, appreciate nature, and literally keep this code and meditate on it daily and bring an entire community across the plane together with values, with the frequency where you could trust each other because you're not murdering you're not stealing. You're honoring your father and your mama. You're resting together in solidarity, man. You're hijack free. You're not working. You're together with no hijacks, no other power. You're not putting Hawa's name in vain. You're not bearing, you're not swearing falsely by the name of Hawa. And you're not coveting. Your neighbor's house, you're not looking over here at Drop Nation saying, man, I want what they got. I'm just going to cover their stuff. I wish I sure wish I had what they got. Man, you can't walk in these shoes. You're going to have to surf the way. You damn sure can't come against it with a concept. However, however, you know, however, I'm going to use these magical books of remembrance to, you know, give you the real drop. And if you think I'm reaching, man, let's go. <coughs> For the dismount, man. It's two hours of talking, man. I'm just, I guess I'm having too much fun. Let's go. You know, we do it so that we don't got to uh, do it again, my night. Let's go. <laughs> so straight up. Presta John, Cibola, cities of gold are not concepts. They are reality, and your guesswork is a twisting snake restless in the back of our classroom. Surf the wave or get washed, little naga, in the same confusion of your bruised ego, because this is all ego. Other than that, you would just give us props and say, hey, man, shout out to 432, yada, 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 and then have your own ideas. That's all good. Nobody's tripping on your own ideas, your own concepts, your own concepts. Have your concepts. But this, however, lets us know that you want to go against something or else you would say, and I'm also going to use the books of remembrance to dig on it further. Now, nah, you said, however, their perspective, this is what I'm going to do with these books, right? I'm going to explain my belief <laughs> with these books. I'm going to explain my belief. 
on Genghis Khan, Cibola, Preston John, and the Seven Cities of Gold. Surf the waver, get washed, little noggin, in the same confusion of your bruised ego. Because that's nothing but ego and arrogance. And that's a concept. <laughs> and he says, you know, he tries to be uh, play uh, cool, slick. You know what I'm saying? We, we elders, you know, know the language already. We know the lingo, so we don't let this shit slide. Because you're going to see what comes out next. And you're going to see why I didn't let this bullshit slide, man. You can't let every damn thing slide. And we don't have to be going uh, off on a tangent or distracted because we done learned a lot in these two hours, I think. Hey, thanks to the little Naga in the back of the classroom. He ain't really in the class, though. You know, he's just over here peeking in, talking shit. You know what I'm saying? But he says, oh, okay, thanks for your research. We don't have to agree. It is what it is. But I appreciate your work. End of story. He tried to play me, you know, real sweet, right? I didn't let that bullshit slide. I told him what it is. Appreciation is shown. If you appreciated us, bro, you would have already said it, man. You would have already said it, man. I mean, you know, let me make sure we get, make sure I got plenty. I got a lot of stuff that I'm dropping. So I'll make sure I got plenty space for this dismount. Lego. Oh, you humble, man. You appreciate our work, man. You would have shown it, man. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, if you appreciate it, you'll be digging on it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you could appreciate it and, and, and disagree, but it ain't gonna look like a debate. It ain't gonna be no however. I'm gonna use my magical books to prove otherwise to explain the concept. Come on, bro. That ain't humble. You ain't learning nothing from mama if you're looking you need to stare some more at another lake or something, man. You need to change your location if you wanna learn from the angels around you, man. Because they ain't showing you no humility. Appreciation is shown, not spoken. And soon you will understand that. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you're right about that. <laughs> I will show. Oh, here we go. This is why I didn't let the bullshit slide. Because I felt this shit coming an entire wave away. Because this ain't the first time dealing with this jabroni and the wing wham of this, of this Jesus talk. You know, he, he said before, oh, yeah, we got to choose up. Con drop is right. I already made my choice. Well, if you made your choice to choose Jesus and we choose Hawa, that's that's just what it is. If you choose to say Jesus is first and we choose our creator, then that's what it is. You know, if you want to choose a fake Joshua other than the actual Joshua that led you to the promised land, man, and all the other Joshua's in between, <laughs> That's up to you. You're right about that. Con, con. I will show how one is supposed to interpret that info. Whoa. Man, that's like you having a that's like you having a baby. And you know, whatever happens, you know what I'm saying? Somebody else gets your child custody. And they're gonna say, I'm gonna show you how you how you how you were supposed to raise this baby. That's like somebody, uh, you know, trying to date your girl. Say, hey, I'm going to show you how you were supposed to treat your woman. I'm going to show you how you supposed to interpret that info. What info? What info? Oh, the research that you just said thank you for. You just said thank you for your research. After I got on your ass about your uh, confusion, you try to play slick. Oh, thanks. You know, thank you for, yeah, yeah. You're so, okay. I appreciate you. That's not showing appreciation. You're speaking it. You're right. But you know what? I'm going to show you how somebody's supposed to interpret that information. I'm going to show you how you're supposed to do this Preston John thing. Are you going to show me how to do the Preston John investigation now, Lil Naga? You weren't speaking Preston John before you start surfing our way. You weren't speaking Cibola before you start surfing our way. You weren't speaking none of these cities of gold, gangs. You weren't even speaking it. That's not my info. It's our wave. We claim our wave. Hawa gave us our wave as an inheritance, man. It's our inheritance. This this drop we're we're dropping on, this is within us, man. We claim this drop. Oh, okay. So you're going to 
I'm going to show you how one is supposed to interpret that info. Just giving respect when it's due. You ain't giving no respect. You're giving fake Ahab, fake respect. And we don't dig on no fake Ahab knockers around here, man. We, we had enough of that. It's the fourth way. We out of there. Just a formality. We will all see who is on the right path very soon. You are right about that. <laughs> May peace be with you. Okay, my nigga. Okay. So first you show your interpretation of appreciation. Then respect. And perhaps our creator will show you humility with gentleness and care. First show your interpretation of appreciation, man, because you say that you uh, you understand that appreciation is shown. So don't skip over all that to start going, you know, throwing stones. Now you're going to show me how I'm supposed to be doing it. My naga, you never came humble, man. You see this face? This ain't no humble face, bro. He's he's fake humbling us at the ocean, right? Oh, the angels are talking to me. I'm so humble by the ocean. I'm so humble by the ocean. We don't deal with no fake Ahab and no fake humble around here, man. And no fake Yeshua and no fake unity. First, show your, appreci your interpretation of appreciation, then respect. Perhaps our creator will show you humility. <laughs> Since you just said that, I'm going to show you how one is supposed to interpret that information. Wow. You're going to show us that in one sitting with your concept. With your concept, you're going to show us how to interpret this information. With your belief. With your, uh, how do they say, what's the concept again? Abstract idea, your general notion. You got your general notion pumping now. <laughs> and with that general notion, you're going to show us what? How to interpret? But not gonna, you can't interpret if you ain't got mama. And you ain't got mama if you ain't got her ways. The code. And you're not... Big up in the cold, you're telling us, uh, nah, not that cold. Not that cold, right? Use the scriptures to understand the air kadeshua. It's a symbiotic relationship that is balanced. Keep the balance. I'm going to start hijacking the keep the code because this is the real code you're supposed to keep. Not that, not, not that 66 or 40 book. Torah to not only nonsense. No, this is the real code. Keep the code. You hijack our keep the code. Call the Tanakh nonsense. Say the real code is just nature and learning from life and trees and the wind and the angels, which are the dragons or the Sarif burning ones. Okay. Now that it's coming out that you're going to show me how to interpret our wave, our drop, right? Because <laughs> you're so humble that I will show you how one is supposed to interpret it. Just a formality. We will all see who is right, right? On the right path. Does that sound humble to you? We're going to see who's right. You right. We're going to see who's right. I'm going to show you how to interpret that drop. Okay, okay. We'll see. Okay, so I interpret that the Father is using his people, whether they are misguided or not. Another dig, right? Because you gave so much appreciation, right? You gave appreciation. I told you it's shown, not spoken, but now you can't even speak it no more. Now you're going to show us how to interpret the drop that Hawaii's been, you know, unfolding in Drop Nation. Now we should all fall back so that you can interpret it for us. Because you're going to show us how it's done. With Jesus, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate that the Father. So I'm telling you, man, you got to interpret appreciation because it don't look like you're humble. Oh, I appreciate the Father is using his people, whether they're misguided or not. So now we're misguided teachers, right? Now, Drop Nation, we're all misguided. Because this jabroni. 
wants to show us how it's done. Well, if you felt like that, you should have said it from the beginning, but I guess that's what this however is all about. I guess this however was saying that, like, however, I'm going to show them how to interpret this information with the books of remembrance, right? So, hey, <laughs> be there, be square, because he's going to use these magical books to show us how to interpret with his however, our perspective, since he knows our perspective, right? He's in the back of class. Clearly, let's go. Whether misguided. So you're saying that Hawa has brought this information out, right? He's, I appreciate the father is using his people, whether misguided or not, to bring out this info. You think the creator is using misguided people? You think the creator is shooting an arrow out misguidedly to accidentally spark you off because you're right? That's arrogance, my knock. Little knock. You arrogant as a motherfucker, man. And you know, I you know I could let it slide if you weren't literally speaking sideways out of your mouth bone, man. That you want the real code. You want the real code. Oh, because this is the real code you're supposed to keep. Not that not, not that sixty six or forty book Torah to not only nonsense. So the Tanakh is nonsense. The Tanakh only is nonsense because we don't rock with Jesus. We ain't in code. That's pretty much all it is to it. That's the ego I'm talking about, right in a nutshell. We don't rock with Jesus. So it's nonsense. Tanakh only means we don't want that slither of necromancy. We don't want a brand new hero, bro. We don't want a new romance. We don't, we don't need a new hero. When Joshua 3, Hosea 3, is already letting us know what it is, that our hero is Hawa. And then once we do that first, seek Hawa and David second, we are humbled, trembled unto the creator and to his goodness in the end of days. So why wouldn't they... Why wouldn't David rate, rise again if we're seeking David in the end of days? Why can't David rise again if Jesus is rising again? Only Jesus could rise again? I thought all the prophets are coming back. I thought all the prophets are coming back. But no, we need to seek Jesus. If we, if we need it, if the children needed to seek Jesus, Yeshua, don't you think it would be somewhere in writing? You think that's the that's the conspiracy when they're teaching it on every corner? They're teaching the conspiracy on every corner? No, they're teaching Jesus on every corner. And they're not teaching David at all. And you're just popping off because we are digging on it and we are, you know, getting a little more foundation as we go. We keeping it real simple, man. I mean, it's right here in our face, but we don't we ain't gotta twist nothing. We don't gotta interject nothing. We ain't gotta say, nope, that's Jesus. Nope, that's David. See Kawhi and David in your face, man. In your face, man. You wanna twist that? It's because you're a twisting snake. A serpent, that is. A serpent with a smile. I wanna hijack the code, you say, huh? Well, you doing it. You doing it. You did it. We're misguided. That's a that's false witness, my naga. Because you're not proving anything. You're not proving one thing. We're misguided at all. You're not proving Preston John is misguided. You know what I'm saying? King David, you know, is misguided. You're not proving Hawa is misguided. You're not proving nothing, man. You're not even on this investigation. You're a baby. You want to start talking Preston John? Welcome, man. We've been doing it for five, six years. Still investigating. Still got a long way to go. But you want to show us how it's done, right? That's what you say. I will show you how one is supposed to interpret that info. Wow. Humble Yahshua. 
strikes again. You're so humble, man. You're so humble. I mean, he says, well, they're misguided. So here we go with the false witnessing. Because somebody misguided ain't going to be bringing out this drop, my naga. And I don't have to hear it from an invader. What invader? Who? Books that we're reading? What? We're just taking their word for it. We're not. Now you just. Now you just been silly, man. Respect means to say who I got it from and to acknowledge their hard work. Right. So you're acknowledging that you're getting it from us. That's your respect, right? That's your respect. I say show appreciation, then respect. You say, yeah, that means I'll show it where I got it. I'm acknowledging your hard work. But here's the backhanded compliment, right? Same way you acknowledge that Mormons have some drop, the same way I'm acknowledging you. Goddamn, goddamn little nigga. Now you just a little nigga. Now you're just a little nigga in the back of the class. Oh, so we're on the level of the hijacked Mormons, right? <laughs> we're on the level of the New Testament, right? That, you know, you got to comb through the red, the red print, the hijacked words of Zeus. Matthew 28, all power has been given unto me. What prophet has to declare all powers suddenly been transferred to him? What prophet in the Tanakh has ever, ever declared all power has been given to me under heaven and earth? Oh, but now we're on the level of the hijack. You went from showing us all this respect, right? Oh, thank you. All this appreciate. Oh, I appreciate you, man. Now we're just misguided. You're going to show us how to interpret our information that we've been digging on, right? You're just piggybacking off of what we've flown with, like a pig would, like a pig should. But we're just talking Zeus and swine in them. It's Zeus, right? The same way you acknowledge that the Mormons have some drop is the same way I'm acknowledge you. Wow, that's a lot of respect. I mean, look, man, you hijacks. You hijacked Central. I'm glad I didn't let up on you, man. I'm glad I, I smelt that swine on you, man. Some drop, you can't help but be, you can't help but be disrespectful. It's who you choose to be. I suppose it must come from deep within you, man. You have no original flow. I mean, clearly you just, you know, jumping in different classrooms and just giving your little rebuttals. You don't have your own teaching. We don't know what you're teaching at all. It's just a piece of all this stuff, and now it's the spirit, and then it's Mother Nature, and then forget the Tanakh, you know, forget all that nonsense, right? Forget that nonsense, because you got a new code. A new code is in town. An excellent new tune's in town, right? I'm going to start hijacking the keep the code, because this is the real code you're supposed to keep. Not that, not, not that 66 or 40 book Torah, Tanakh only nonsense. Nonsense. Got it, got it. I mean, you know, we got it. Nonsense. Exodus 20 got us in code. Nonsense. That's the real code we should be keeping, not, not putting the power before power. No false images, no false gods, no vanity with the creator's name, no Shabbat. That's nonsense. We, The real code is the earthly mother nature. Nonsense, you say, huh? One more time, I, you know, we got to hear it, you know. We got to break the spell, man. We, we got to repeat this thing. Keep the balance. I'm going to start hijacking the keep the code because this is the real code you're supposed to keep. Not that not, not that 66 or 40 <laughs> book Torah to not only nonsense. No, this is the real code. Keep the code. Shalom, Mom, say lock, lock. Peace be on Peace be unto you. <laughs> okay, Jedi. But are you Judah? And if you're Judah, you will have more respect on King David's name than what I'm about to read right now. Straight from your monkey mouth, man. For the dismount. 
Damn, damn, damn. Y'all thought I was just tripping for no reason? Nah, man. I'm tripping for the cold. I'm tripping because some jabroni, speaking a bunch of wing wham, just said this is nonsense. And he got the new cold. He got the real cold, right? He got, he got, he got the real, he got the real cold. Peace be unto you. What peace? What peace? You can't have no peace if you keep putting the power besides your power. Fool, because now you're just a fool. Now you're the fool. You went from the little nigga in the back of class to the little nigga to the fool in the back of our class. Let's go. You have no original flow, nothing. Lack of originality is a sign of no wisdom, no armor providing you water. Enough play, play, little homie in the back of the class. You still have your Christ middleman blocking any chance of 360 vision. Rule number one, no power but our creator. You bounce around in everybody's class, but we peeped your fraudulent flow an entire wave ago. Choosing up is a lifestyle, not a hobby. Now, since you're incapable of showing actual respect with this disrespectful post, proceed to jump head first in the Antarctic water. Oh, I guess so, bro, he says. Again, we don't have to agree. Ain't no one's asking to agree with you. We don't agree with fools. Everyone has their lane. What's your lane? Fool's lane? There's no middleman? Really? Now you're lying. You just said that you do that from time to time. You just said, you just admitted to doing this from time to time. There is no middleman, huh? Yeshua. Uh-oh. He is the father. Got him. Yeshua the unifier. Christ the unifier just said he's the father. Damn, damn, damn. Come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. Exodus 20 got us in code. I am Hawa who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other power. No other power besides me. Jesus is God. He is the Father. Damn, damn, damn. Isaiah 43. I am Hawa, and beside me there is no Savior. He is the Father. So you just made this fictional reflection of Zeus, the Creator. But Solomon said it best in Psalm 17. Did Solomon say anything about Christ being uh, the creator? Or are you just going to take Solomon's words out of context? Oh, I know what you did. You went to the favorite Christian scripture of all time because you're a Christian. Wisdom is before him that has understanding, but the eyes of the fools are in the ends of the earth. Right. So you have wisdom and we're the fools. You don't even keep the code. What code? Hey, it's just written down. It's just written down in Paleo Hebrew in Los Lunas, New Mexico on a big ass boulder. But I'm sure that was just a distraction for us today. Nah, my naga. Wisdom is before the ones that see clearly, that have the inner standing, overstanding, but your foolish eyes are in the ends of the earth. You're, you're staring off, right? You're staring off into the abyss. Peace unto me. Peace unto you. You're just staring off, man. Your eyes are at the ends of the earth, man. Yeah. Let's go. That's Proverbs 17. That's what you got? That's the scripture you want to give us to prove your JC? To prove your Yeshua? To prove your hijack city? Solomon said it best. He said nothing about Jesus. He said that the wise has the understanding. 
and the fools are staring off into the abyss. You'll keep searching when it's been in front of you. What? What? What, Jesus? What? Wisdom? What? But you won't humble yourself. That's what the Christians say. That's what the arrogant Christian says, that everyone else is not humbling themselves. And that's a choice of yours and the people you study with. Uh-oh, now you're bringing in the people we study with? Just call them out by name. Drop Nation. What it do? Eat their squid eye. So we're all making this terrible choice to be fools, according to what you're getting in uh, Proverbs 17, 24. Wisdom is before him that has understanding, but the eyes are the fools. So we're all the fools. Drop Nation is now fool. You see how I had to get put my foot on the neck bone, you know, spiritually speaking, Ruach speaking, you know. I'm not, you know, this is your rule I come up against, not you, man. You know what I'm saying? It's that fake, fraudulent rule that got nowhere else to hide. But our perspective is 360. And you can't complete or compete with what we do with one concept of a video. One idea. <laughs> Tears down an investigation. You don't want to build. You want to debate with your however i'm gonna do this i'll show you this and just to know that he wasn't bullshitting he literally says i will show you how one is supposed to interpret that information that's what that however meant so we just had to get it out of him my nigga. i just had to press his ass right quick for the dismount oh yeah you know he, he done put his foot in his mouth Christ is the Father. Here we go, Christian. Solomon said it best. He said nothing about what you just said. False witness again. We won't humble ourselves. The choice is yours and the people we study with, right? The whole tribe is wrong. And if you feel that I'm such a smudge on your hard work for whatever you guys believe in, why make the information free? What the fuck is you talking about? You're not a smudge on our hard work. You ain't got nothing to do with our work. You ain't shit when it comes to our classroom and our work. You ain't a smudge. We don't care about what you're doing. But if you're going to bring us up and uh, bring up our perspective, since it's clear you're talking about everybody we study with, if you want to talk about the perspective of Drop Nation, we have a voice too. We've built up a platform to investigate and to express our voice. Oh, yeah. Why make the information free? Because that's what we do, my noggin. <laughs> that's what we do. By the time the noggin support and they, you know what I'm saying, rocking and, you know, ether pack up, man, they, they got all the information all these years for free. Should we start charging for information? Should I say I won't? I'm not going to give this lesson if you don't pay me. Should I do that? What do you mean? Why make our information free? See, that's that that's that talk that's just not with wisdom. That's that perverse talk we was just reading about in, in Proverbs 8. If this information truly came from Hawa, why are you here trying to convince or cast accusations or putting a look, man? You sound you sound dumb as fuck, right? You, you, you sound stupid as a mother. I told you put the kids to bed. This is, the, this is that spirit of stupor in full effect. Why are you here trying to convince or cast out? Convince what? Ac accuse what? I'm calling it like I see it, boss. I'm asking you for the respect. This is about respect. This is about saying, you know what? Enjoy the flow and see how you can build on it. That's all you had to say. But to try to tell us our perspective and then explain how you're going to, you know, use whatever concept, concept, however, you know what I'm saying? That's disrespectful. How you going to show us how to interpret the information is disrespectful. <clears throat> Let's go. Tired of talking. It's been two and a half hours. <laughs> but I hope y'all learned something, man. I hope this little jabroni, you know, has this in his archives. 
he won't get it, but you know, it's for everybody else who has questions and uh, sees these hijacked posts and wants to know that, you know, Drop Nation is uh, about what we say we about. We keep the code that's alive, not dead. Not killing, not stealing puts you into life, not death. Oh, but he gets, here comes more, my nigga. Why not make the information free? If this information came from a while, why are you trying to convince or cast accusations or put a label on whatever you're doing? What label did we put on what we're doing? What accus- what accusations are we putting out? What am I accusing? What? What? I'm asking you to show your interpretation of appreciation. Oh, but now it doesn't come from Hawaii. So that's uh, bearing false. Wit- that's that's that vanity we just talked about. Using Hawaii's name in vain. He can do whatever he wants to with his info. Did I say not to use my info? Did I say it's mine? Or did I say put some respect on the investigation? Unless it's not his. Back to your false witness. I'm lost. Why are you even upset or annoyed? Uh. However, I will use the books of remembrance to explain the concept. Why am I annoyed? I will show you how one is supposed to interpret that information. Why is that annoying? You know what? You could do whatever you do. You annoying me. That's not even the point. <laughs> What's annoying is your frequency. What's annoying is the arrogance of that fake spirit within our tribe. And when we see it, we call it out point blank period. I don't even know why you're so upset or annoyed, but I think it's ridiculous that you would even think that David would literally be our king. Wow. After we're not supposed to have a king, as it says in Samuel, you know what happened, little naga or little fool? Israel wanted a king because they wanted to be like the other nations. They got Saul. Saul ruled them like a king. Then they prayed for relief and they got David, the priest king, the Khan. He ruled them like a Khan, not a king. He didn't abuse the people. He ruled him like a Khan. So Israel was never supposed to have a king, but a Khan? Uh, yeah, that's immortal. Why is he immortal? How many baths did the Prester take in the fountain of you? Whoever drinks of his water three times without having eaten will have no illness for 30 years. And when he has drunk enough, he will feel as if he has eaten the finest meat and spices for his full of Hawaii's grace. A person who bathes in his fountain, whether he's a hundred or a thousand, will regain the age of 32. Know that we were born and blessed in the womb of our mothers 562 years ago. And since then, we've bathed in the fountain six times. So that puts them back what? This letter was written in 1165. Have you debunked the letter or are you just going to? you know, agree with popular narrative. Oh, this is all just that. It don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. Now you are fully, you know, speaking the rhetoric of the invader of Hijack City. Be careful when you agree with the Hijack. Be careful when you're talking against David. You don't understand why David is king? I know he didn't just say that. I know you didn't just... I. See, I knew you weren't surfing the wave. Oh, you think it's ridiculous that we would even think David would literally be our king? Hey, put it this mouth, man. <laughs> Afterwards, the children of Israel shall return, see Kawa their power, and David their king literally shall come trembling. In the end of days, David is king, end of days. David is king, end of days. David is king, end of days. But you think it's ridiculous that we would consider David our king. Afterwards, after we were never supposed to have a king, again, Saul was what was given as a punishment. David is the correction. And that's why this flow is immortal. But why else, man? Why else drop? Let's go. Let's go. 
Jeremiah 30, man. Why else? For the dismount. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Hawa, that I will break his yoke off, off of your neck and will burst your bands. So you free now, my Nagi. Now I'm just talking to my Nagas for the dismount, man. Forget about the jabroni. Let's go. And strangers shall no more make him their bondsmen, their slaves, and they shall serve Hawa, their power, and David, their king. So we just got in Hosea 3, the same thing. We'll seek Hawa and David. Now you've seen it again at Jeremiah 30. Another witness, right? Jeremiah, Hosea, serve Hawa and David, your king. End of days, whom I will raise up. Whom I will raise up, like, you know, future, future, whom I will raise up. Wow. You don't understand? It's ridiculous to you that David is our king, man. I hope you know what you're doing with your mouth, man. Bearing false witness on David like this. But I know you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, man. Why is it ridiculous? And I will set up one shepherd, one shepherd over them. Ezekiel 34, 23. And he shall feed them, my servant David. He shall feed them. He shall be their shepherd. You think it's ridiculous that David is our con? Y'all mind if I get uh, my harps playing again? I, I just need to balance. I need balance, right? We need balance? Okay, let's get it. Let's get our balance flowing again. You think it's ridiculous that David is con, right? <clears throat> Let's go, man. You think it's ridiculous. I'm giving you everything I got, man. You think it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that you would even think that David would literally be our king. You think it's ridiculous that David is immortal. Preston John ain't got no fountain of youth. You love the earthly mother, but you don't give her that much respect to have living water. Got you, got you. That's a hypocrite. Oh, but you say extremely hypocritical. God, as you say, I have a middle man, but you seem to deify. You seem to deify. False witness 101. You can't keep the code if you wanted to, bro. I think you're just stuck Bearing false witness and putting the power before your power. I don't need to deify David fool in the back. David is already being lifted up by Hosea after we see Kawa and David. David is being lifted up in Jeremiah. They will serve Hawa and David, their king. Whom I will raise up unto them. Man, we're talking after captivity. Con. This is after uh, first Kings, second Kings, my Nagi. This is when we all came back together. But when do we do that? This is futuristic. These are prophets. My servant David shall feed them. He shall be their servant. I will be their power. And my servant David shall be their con, their prince among them. Shall be is futuristic. So we got prophet Hosea, prophet Jeremiah, prophet Ezekiel. All breaking down a prophecy that David is king forever. I said forever. Managa. Ezekiel 37. Oh, yeah, those two sticks, right? The two sticks come together, right? Let's go. And my servant David shall be king over them, 24, and they shall all have one shepherd. Again, my servant David shall be king over them. You think it's ridiculous that David's our king? When David shall be king. 
oh, but it's just words now. Now it's just words on the paper because you don't agree with it. And they all shall have one shepherd and they shall walk in my ordinances and observe my statutes and do them. They shall dwell in the land. Observe my statutes, my naga. That means that you ain't saying, oh, this don't matter. Oh, keep the code. Nah, I rock with that. The, the, the new code, the real code. We don't have to observe the commandments no more. You know, they're just written down now. We don't got to do them, right? Because, hey, you ain't got to do that stuff. I mean, what the bro just say? I, I can't believe you said this, bro. I can't believe you just said this, man. I can't believe you just said this, man. I'm going to start hijacking the keep the code because this is the real code you're supposed to keep. Not that, not, not that 66 or 40 book Torah to not only nonsense. No, this is the real code. Nonsense, you say, right? They will observe my ordinances, my statutes, my code, and they will do them. Oh, but not that Torah-only nonsense. Torah-only nonsense is code, sense. You don't got the code without the Torah. You don't get the you don't get the code from the New Testament. You don't get the code from just walking around in, in the wilderness. I mean, I hope you can vibe up to where you don't put a power before your power, but you haven't done it. And they shall dwell in the land that I give unto Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, they and their children and their children's children forever. Anaga, why? Why will David be king forever? Why is he immortal? You don't think he's immortal? Because we're talking forever. And David, my servant, shall be their Khan forever, their prince forever. I don't understand why you think David would literally be our king. I don't understand why you think David is immortal. I don't understand, drop. <laughs> Forever, 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 man. David is con forever. Hosea, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, forever, my night. Man, forever means forever. Yeah, I mean, when you're surfing this wave, you better start seeing clearly. Zechariah 12, man, you better start seeing clearly, man. In that day shall Hawah defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them, in that day shall be as David. Oh, but you got a problem with David. He's not quite all the king you want, right? What did he say? Let's go, man. <laughs> you seem to deify him. Okay, we're deifying someone who's being raised up by Hawa. Gotcha. Whom was a righteous man, so he's righteous, but he did things I would never want in a king. You are bearing false witness on David. And if you're just talking about what's already been admitted, you know, what he had to, you know, be uh, restored and what he had to repent. With the whole Bathsheba, my naga, like he had to, he lost his son. He lost a couple sons. He lost Absalom. They lost the first bond that they had. He lost so much because of that decision. And you still think you can come over here and throw stones at David after all he's lost and what he had to do to regain it? You want to throw stones like you could have done a better job than King David? You are an arrogant fool. To throw stones at David, you are an arrogant fool. To think you can walk a mile, walk an inch in the shoes of the priest, king, prestawan, emperor, de lo Abyssinius. You are arrogant, man. And you can't see beyond that. Because your own words have condemned you. You better, man. You better change your flow, bro. You ain't got much time. It's the fourth quarter. 
Oh, he was righteous, but he did things I would never want in a king. He did things you would never want in a king. Yet, in, the, in that day, shall Hawah defend Israel, the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And even he that is weak shall be like David in that day. But you, you know, he did things that you wouldn't want in a king, right? You don't want this king. You don't want this Khan. You want Saul or you want Jesus? Jesus never fought no wars for you like David. Jesus, you know, uh, didn't have the relationship, the connection being anointed as only king. First and only priest king, the king that was anointed. The correction of Saul. And he did stuff you didn't like. I mean, man, you can't even fix your mouth to throw no stones at David. Because you could have done better than the Prester. You could look from your perspective, your whack-ass perspective at the life that you think you know of David. You don't know shit about David. You don't know nothing about David. But he did stuff I didn't like. Well, what about the stuff he did like? Because apparently he did so much stuff that Hawa likes. That he is the compare, he's the comparison of strength. He that is weak, feeble, will be as David, and the house of who David shall be as God. Oh, you Christians ain't reading this. Not the house of Jesus, not the house of Yeshua, not the house of Joshua. The house of David will be as the Creator, capital G. As the angel of Hawa before them, the dragon. That's what David is. You asked me a question, bro. What would David do, man? Let's get to it, man, for the dismount. You want to talk about extremely hypocritical? We don't deify David. We seek and search for the Preston as we're supposed to. We're following the script to the T, but it's too literal because uh, it crosses over all your hijack. This priest king investigation, it takes all their hijack out of play. That's why they hate it, because it, they can't rock with their Jesus and Muhammad's throughout this thing. Because the Prester's fighting against the Sultan and them, against those other Moors, right? Now the Almics have to be loved. That's your concept or is that your arrogance? I just stopped because, you know, I stopped caring. I, you, you sure did stop caring. The truth will come out regardless of your lack of con. Oh, now you want to speak like the con. You're talking about this drop, that drop. The Mormons have some drop. You can't stop using our flow. You can't stop it because, you know, you, you're just washed up in the tidal wave. You can't stop it. <laughs> but you say you don't copy anything, dude. Seems like you're copying a lot. I mean, I get it, man. You've been surfing our wave, man. You know, it's all good, but you got to be in order, bro. And you're too arrogant to have order. I watch others and say my viewpoint Got you. So you agree that you have no originality. You just watching other people sharing your concept. Your concept is your viewpoint or your abstract idea or general notion, your belief. You admit to all this, bro. So by the time I start talking about concepts, you're saying, oh, you just nitpicking on words. You are confirming it and validating everything I'm saying. I don't copy anything, dude, but you watch others and say your view. If you're just if you're watching other people all day, you damn sure are copy. And it's okay to copy and it's okay to use what we bring out, but don't misuse it. And please don't ever try to speak from my perspective again, personally speaking. Let go. Dude, you double dude at me, man. Hey. I once got into some serious issue with somebody that hit me with a double, bro. They said, look here, bro. No, 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 bro. 
and there was problems. There was furniture moving. There was furniture moving. Now you're going to hit me with the double dude? The double dude, dude. You're talking too gnarly for me. You know, I guess you're hanging out at the uh, at the beach a whole lot, man. Surf's up, dude. Okay. Concept, general notion. Something conceived in your mind, bone, thought, notion, abstract, idea, generic. You're coming with a generic idea about our investigation. Talking about you're going to show us how to interpret the information. Brother, concept is all you have. The rest is insecurity and a whack perspective. Again, proceed with your concept of everything you'll never comprehend. Not like this, brother. You can't smell your own filth, and that would always plug your ass up. <laughs> you can't smell your own shit. All zanza, let go. Then he hits me with the new testy. You blind guides would strain an, at a gnat, swallow a camel. What does it mean, man? You're speaking in parables, aren't you? <coughs> He said, but I guess that's too new testy for you. Yeah, man, you're too new testy because the new testy is, an, is a, a new tune. And if you ain't in the ancient love song, you can't appreciate the code. I can't ex I can't expect you to appreciate me. You don't expre you don't appreciate Hawa. You put another power beside Hawa. Next to Hawa, Jesus is God, right? That's what you say. <laughs> he is king, right? He is the pappy, right? He is the father. No middleman. Well, you just dissolved your middleman into God himself, right? Okay. You're stressing about a word that I use as if I'm really about to make a video on something that's fictional. No, you're about to make a video about your concept. You know this shit is real. You know what we do is real. Your concept is fictional. Your concept is a farce. Because my explanation came... Oh, because my explanation, wait, 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 I regarded this as a concept because my explanation can be completely wrong. Right. So if you admit that your explanation can be completely wrong, why is this this? However, you know what's going on here? Why don't you say hey, we, we're going to surf the wave with some stuff? I don't know if it's wrong or right, but let's go. You say four, three, two has the perspective that we are them. However, I'm going to use the books of remembrance to explain your generic idea that can be completely wrong. However, you're going to explain something that can be completely wrong. That shit don't make no sense, man. That's why I know you ain't rocking with Ama. You ain't got no wisdom, bro. You just act like you do. That's a big difference because you can't explain something knowing that you could be completely wrong. That means you need to keep studying, bro. We know we ain't completely wrong when we talk con David. It's con forever. Because <laughs> we are surfing a wave that David shall be their prince forever. It's not our interpretation, bro. You're going to show us how to interpret this? You're going to squeeze Jesus in? I got you. I got you. I got you, bro. What else? What else, man? I got to get out of it. What else, man? I regarded this as a concept because my explanation can be completely wrong. Bang. I believe, man, your explanation is completely wrong. And that's why we jump on it. Because you're bearing false witness. Against the code, against David, and on and on we go. Definitely against Drop Nation. Oh, because you got a new code, right? Not that Torah only nonsense, right? I believe that all may come from love. That's your belief. You didn't say belief up here, though. You said, I'm going to release a video regarding the children of love, a.k.a. the all man. Like, that's who they are. You didn't say, I believe that all man. You're a double talker, bro. You're not humble and you don't, you know, bring out the information humbly. You just say, this is that. I think they're love. You believe they're Israelites. I believe that there's an Israelite connection. Not that every single tribe or person under the Almec or Toltec title must be this or that. But you can't deny the connection, and that's what we're digging on, man. Stop bearing false witness on us, man. 
We never said that. So how I'm planning to explain it is a concept regarding of who I'm saying is who. You are confused, bro. You're tripping over words. You're tripping over your own words. We don't got to do that. But why would we talk about words? Or the word? Come on, bro. I know that you think I'm an idol worshiper. I think you think you're an idol worshiper. I think you put another power beside your power. Because Exodus 20, God is in code. No other gods before me. I think you think I'm an idol worshiper. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Okay. You know, idol worshiper, yeah. But nitpicking really ain't cool. Nah, it's not nitpicking if you're worshiping idols, bro. It's not nitpicking if we're trying to pull our brother out of idolatry and tell him no other gods. It's not nitpicking telling our brother there is no other savior. That's not nitpicking. And it's not nitpicking to talk about a word like concept because the word has life or death. He said, what would David do? I told you, somebody asked me, what would David do? With all you've said about David, are you sure you want to know what David will do? <laughs> what has David done is the question in reality. And what has Yeshua Jesus done in reality? Absolutely nothing. What has David done? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Nitpicking really ain't cool. I know you think I'm an idol worshiper, but nit <laughs> you admit that you're an idol worshiper, bro. But nitpicking ain't cool. Hey, it is cool when we were uh, having a, a positive intention to spread the vibration awareness, let you know that you should be connected directly. What would David do, though, man? What has David done? Words are life or death, brother. Words bear fruit of life or death. Your teaching has no breath or foundation because you don't have mama. Nah, you think mama is Christ, right? And of course, <laughs> mama, <laughs> you think Christ is the Ruach, not mama, right? <laughs> you don't think mama's Christ? Strike that. You don't even care about mama. You just think she's the earthly mama. And you give all the, the credence, all the foreverness, all the everlastingness, to the false, fake Jesus. And of course, no originality. I mean, you said you, you know, you just stare at other people's work all day, right? You just, you know, watch other people, right? How did you put it? <laughs> oh, I watch others and say my viewpoint. Got it, got it. I watch others, right? No originality, bro, because you're too busy watching others. You think we're watching you? You think I'm sitting here watching a bunch of other people's videos? How do I have time to do that and, you know, surf my way, my not? I don't. But you do, because that's your wave. Your wave is watching other people, and that's your problem. No originality, as you clearly admit. What will the press to do? Return, Hosea 3, man. And that's that. I mean, we let it speak for itself and we see the confirmation right in our face bone. And we know when there's a twisting serpent in the back of our classroom. You want to reach perfection. You have to be able to practice the law. And you have to understand why the law is perfect. Right? But what's even more perfect is the, per is the, is the entities who made the law. And these angels that the Most High has put in charge of teaching us while we're here. The law is perfect, but what's more perfect is Hawa, Khan. But Hawa is giving you an opportunity to be in the frequency of Hawa through the code. So you can't separate the perfection of the code and Hawa. Hawa is the code. The code is Hawa. It's a frequency that you get in when you stop putting a power for your power. Stop killing. Stop stealing. Stop ignoring the Shabbat. You know what I mean? When you get in code, you're in the flow. There's no separation between the code and Hawa. 
We're here. These angels have never left. These angels will not lie to us. These ang what angels, fool? Call them out by name because angels have names, don't they? You talking about water? Water speaking to you? What language, man? Interpret that water that you see. The angels speaking to us, they ain't lying, but you are. These angels will not edit any books. These angels will not speak out of context. So, you need to be taught by your living teachers, not by your dead teachers. You can't be taught by them. Forever. You got to choose life, bro. If you're calling the code a dead teacher, if you're calling, you know what I'm saying, our prophets dead teachers, damn, you're a disrespectful motherfucker. And you're an arrogant motherfucker. And you're a fool in the back of the class. But your dead teachers should lead you to your living teachers. And living teachers are not men. Men will lie to you. I will lie to you. No shit. This won't. This won't. This won't. They won't lie. They won't lie. So... So should we go to the ocean and say, you know, how do we, uh, you know, raise our vibration as a community and the ocean is going to say what? You're just talking out your ass, bro. Oh, they're not going to lie. The tree's not going to lie. The tree is not in competition with the code you are. The tree is in code. The tree ain't got to lie. But you admit that you do. You got to get in tune with your real teachers. Because as well, Matzah is in all of these angels. He is fused. Here we go with this Matzah. Mozzarella, here we go. These angels. So he is teaching us through these angels. Through the earthly mother's angels. He is teaching us. He has, he is, he is all of this. He is everything. He ain't talking about Hawaii. He ain't talking about the creator. He's talking about Jesus. Look at his eyes. He's in love with Jesus. That's his romance. He's been romanced by Jesus. Yeshua, right? The unifier. Or or is he the Joshua, the divider? He's everywhere. He's everywhere. You ain't talking Hawaii. You're talking matzah, right? Who's matzah? He's everything. If you guys don't know, matzah is pretty much the form of the Messiah and the Holy Spirit as one. That is who he is. Uh, uh, matzah is pretty much, not exactly, but pretty much. Say it again, bros. That is who he is. Uh, matzah is pretty much the form of the <coughs> Messiah and the Holy Spirit as one. Christ and the Holy Spirit is their matzah. Got it? Y'all got it? Christ plus Holy Spirit is matzah. Mozzarella cracker. Mozzarella cheese. Christ plus the Holy Spirit. Messiah, right? Nah, he ain't no messenger of ours. Not if you gotta uh, get it in your um, excellent new tomb with the new hero. Matzah is the Holy Spirit. Matzah is the Holy Spirit, Christ. So where's matzah in your Hebrew? Everywhere, right? Everywhere, right? But you don't have your matzah before you get your cut off <laughs> flow. You don't got matzah before you get your nourishment. You got your ha and your wa. Hawa is everything. Hawa is everywhere. Hawa is everything. Hawa says, I even I am Hawa, and beside me there is no savior. But matzah is everywhere. Matzah is everything. Come on, man. Come on, bro. You just admit it over here.
that Jesus is God, right? He is the Father. Gotcha. As one. That is who he is. Uh, when he came on the earth, you know, he was the son. When did he come on the earth? Oh, you got to go into the New Testament book for that. But then you discount the books when it comes to the code. You say, I oh, don't keep that code in the Torah only to knock only a nonsense, you call it. But matzah only I could read about him all day. And that's fine. That's fine. That story rocks. I love matzah. And then when he was stabbed in his rib, uh, the Holy Spirit. When was he stabbed in his rib? Oh, in the story. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what happened when you were stabbed in the rib and your mothers were decapitated and, you know what I'm saying, raped and violated in all these ways and your priests were slaughtered and they put us in frying pans, like, you know, all that, you know what I'm saying? It's What happened to your sacrifice? What happened to your crucifixion? Now it's about matzah and him being pierced through the rib. You're a Christian, bro. Holy Spirit that came on the earth. Now the Holy Spirit came on the earth. Let me get that back. On the earth, you know, he was the son. And then when he was stabbed in his rib, uh, the Holy Spirit then came on the earth. Where's your proof, bruh? You ain't got no facts. You're just going off the, off the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told you this. Or are you reading it out of a book? And you're choosing to you know, uh, amalgamate with this syncretinized, you know what I'm saying, story of death, which is really the story of your crucifixion and your death, if you saw it clearly. You are the Jesus that was crucified, man, but you're not Jesus. You know, you're not Zeus. You are the son that was crucified, man. Israel, my firstborn son. Israel, my firstborn son. How can you say he's the son, bruh? Haven't you ever heard of Israel? Thy first born. Exodus 20 got his income. Exodus 20 got his income. Oh, man. There we go. We just got to skip one chapter over over here, man. Making the Yapa dismount for the tribe, man. Shout out to the tribe, you know. Just taking our time to address things all across the plane, you know what I mean? We got to speak up for us, my nagi. If, no, if we don't, who will? If we don't, who will? Yeah, man. My first born. And that's in verse 9. Let's get it from verse 9 then. I mean, I know I saw it somewhere. They shall come with weeping, with supplication. Will I lead them? I will cause them to walk by water, rivers of water, and straight way wherein they shall not stumble. For I am become a father to Israel, and Ephraim my first born. But he just said, Jesus... Is, is, is this, he came, he's the son, but Ephraim's being called the son. I mean, you know, Exodus 4. I mean, let's go, man. We're just making a dismount here. Yeah? And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus says Hawah, Israel is my son, my firstborn. You see how Jesus, Yeshua, has replaced the entire tribe of Israel, as well as Mama, the Ruah, who is the everlasting, who's been there forever, created first, you know, rocking with Hawah, one drop, Israel's my son, my firstborn. Israel is my son. Israel is my son. He was the son. And then when he was stabbed in his rib, uh, the Holy Spirit then came on the earth. To pretty much finish the job, but he is the... To pretty much finish the job? 
Mama is everything. She don't got to finish the job. She is the job. She is everything, bruh. Yeah, man. I think you got the whole uh, the whole game in a in a crux and on a cross. I think you're putting everything on a cross now. I don't think you're seeing clearly, bro. It's the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit comes from him, and he is the Eric Kadeshoy. He's not saying the Holy Spirit comes from Hawa. He's saying the Holy Spirit comes from Christ. Damn, and he's the and he's the the uh. The Ruach, right? Because he has fused with the air that short. So he literally is everything. Wow. Then what is Hawa? <laughs> if he's everything, what's Hawa? Because last time that I checked, last time that I checked, I, even I am Hawa, and beside me there is no Savior. What do you mean he's everything, bruh? Don't you hear yourself? Is Does this sound like wisdom talking? You're over here trying to get a brand new son involved, huh? Israel is my son, my firstborn. This, you are the hero, my nagu. You are being redeemed. You were crucified. You are the son. He's hijacking you, us, mama. He's hijacking Hawa. Because now this jabroni's talking about he is the father. Man, hey man, you go ahead and uh, proceed, bro. You know, you, you go ahead and explain in your concept, your abstract idea, your belief of Almec, you know, being only Lud, only Lud. The Almecs are on. That's a concept like I never, you know, Lud is the son of Shem. Sure, the Almecs, you know, have a connection with the son of Shem. But does that mean that they're not Israel? Come on, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm going to need you to wakey, wakey, bro. You know what I mean? Does that mean, you know, because when you deal with with this love, you know, they're connected with a lot of the hijack, a lot of the Gentile connection, bro. So you're over here just bearing false witness on the entire Almex, man. Who are the she? Because you said you're going to dig on the she too, right? Because you're surfing our way. Because I know you wouldn't be doing that if you weren't surfing our way because you ain't got no originality man you know what i mean just remember man that we're just talking tangu for the dismal tangu for the dismal shan shi my nage. and you better get into them jans and them and them and them laos and them songs and them tangs definitely into the katans and the car katans oh boy i mean i really hope you get into it man as soon as I start bringing this stuff up, I mean, it just opens up a whole another portal in our investigation. These Katans are the car Katai of Cathay, Manaka. We know this, right? We're connecting the priest King Flo. And I know you know it's not fictional. I know you know we're talking David, but you're talking down on David. Oh, you know, he did stuff I wouldn't like as a king. Who asked you what you're going to like as a king? What king is asking for your validation? What con is asking you for validation? Who's asking you what you like in the king? Oh, sorry, I'm not a perfect man. <laughs> that means that your king's able to make a mistake and make a correction, right? You need someone who's able to correct themselves, not have an imaginary level of perfection, but is able to do their best to keep the code. And when they're out the code, they can be back in the code, but you don't even respect the code. Because when it comes to the code, you want the real code. This balance. Keep the balance. I'm going to start hijacking the keep the code because this is the real code you're supposed to. How can you hijack the code, bro? Unless you tell us that it's dead. Hey, man, get out of our way, man. You know what I'm saying? You can exit stage right out of our classroom, man. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you're really on the jabronis. And if you're going to prove anything about the Almex and you're going to connect them with the Tangu, then you got to understand, man, especially when you get into this time period around these 1200s. That Tamujin Genghis Khan had a conflict with the Shi. So if you want to make the Shi 
just the Lud of Shem, which connected with the Persian Babylonian drop. Temujin and the Persians and the Babylonians are on the same damn side, man. Who are they in conflict with? Who are they in conflict with? It's more and more war. You're putting them on the same side. If they're just Lud, it ain't Lud over here fighting against the sultans. It ain't Lud over here fighting Genghis Khan. You know who's fighting Genghis Khan? The Shi. Because Genghis led another raid into the western Shi. Genghis Khan was hijacking the Shi. Just like you're hijacking the code. That's what you said, right? Genghis Khan was hijacking the Shi or the Tangu. Where's Tangu? Where's India Superior? Where's Florida? Where's you? Where's Tangu? So we know what's all happening here. You know what's all happening here in China. But this ain't got to do with Israelites. It got to do with only Lud, man. That's just two-dimensional thinking with no recon. And you're just going to use a concept and a general belief to try to back that up. When it comes to the Shi, when it comes to the Shi, XI Shi, they all may call themselves the Shi, the same name that they used when they were in China. And we just got over here with the Western Shi, you know what I mean? That these uh, Chinese were, you know, originally being called the Shi. They were using the Shi. There's a guy right here. The Mongol quest of Tangu in China. The Tangu edition of the Trip Pitaka or Hits Hitsia uh, script of 3220 Kawan was printed in Hog or Hang Cow and completed 1302. So let's connect this she for the dismount because if the Ma if, if the if the Almec calls himself the she, and then the she was also the original, you know, China flow. Man, I mean, it has to do more than with Lud, my nigga. The she just can't, uh, you know, connect to just the son of Shem. You think Genghis Khan is going to war with just the son of Shem against just Lud? Nah, I mean, this, this she goes a little deeper, man. You know what I mean? You got to be willing to go a little deeper. When you want to dig on the original flow of China. Hey, allow what? You know, that we can come together, man, and, you know, put an investigation together, no matter who tries to jump in it. And we can always bring it right back home, man. You know? If you know where home is, it's all good. If, if you know where home is. If you know who the Almec are, where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found, then you can, you can connect the Ogier or Almec heads with the Ogam, Sylvanus, Solomon II. You can connect that with Sylvanus, Totexas, Solomon the Builder. And you can connect that with the history of 775 AD and Nehemiah reconquering America. Or Kalelus. What is seven? What is seven seventy five A.D. Amarik Nehemiah Amarik have to do with America and the army? Oh, it's just the Lud. You wanna you wanna dismiss all this barber connection, Swan Knight connection, and let. And say the Swan Knights, the Barber Hakazin, are just, are just what? Lud. I think you just want to spark your own, you know, wave, you know, without really giving it up. I think you give it up because you have to. Once somebody puts their foot on your neck, then you say, oh, thank you. Thank you for the research. Oh, you know, we, we don't have to agree. It's all good. You wanted me to leave it there. Nah, I kept my foot on your neck. Because if you're going to show appreciation, man, you, it better be shown, not spoken. But the next words out your mouth is, I will show how one is supposed. To. I'm going to show you how a real nigga do it. I'm going to show you how a real uh, scholar interprets the drop. 
Because just like you got some drop, Mormons got some drop. That's how I acknowledge you. Oh, yeah, they're hijacks, but they got some drop. Really? While using our <laughs> our words, our flow. You, you talking drop for a reason, bro. You ain't talking Mormon talk. You're talking drop talk. So, yeah, you know, you get the babies out the bathwater because we taught you to do that in this investigation. And now only a hijack tries to twist that and say, oh, y'all, y'all got some drop. My naga, this is Drop Nation. And you better dig on it. And you damn sure going to put some respect on our name and stop being so damn disrespectful. Or we going to keep our foot on your neck bone. In real time. I mean, real time. What? Would David do? Well, what would the Preston do? What has the Preston done? Uh, did a black man discover the fountain of you? <laughs> well, you tell me, man. Because around here, it's all happened. All praise the why. We keep the water flowing. And we keep the fire burning. And to the little nog in the back of the class. Hey, man, get with it or get left on, man. Because around here, it's all happening. And you got to be willing to surf the wave or go ahead and get washed up. All praise our creator, ancient head of days, and only our creator. Allow Hawa and only Hawa. That's how we flow, and that's how we keep the code.